Drip King Pelcanator, could that be the most hated lacrosse team ever? When I find a wife, I might get a buzz call. That being said, I think the Atlas can do that to every team if you don't play them. You got a little a mini mullet going on, no? Welcome back to another episode of the Mitchell Pelkey Lacrosse Show presented by STX on TLN. We're here live in Boston, Massachusetts. Let's get it going at Harvard Stadium for another live episode. The cast is not here, but slipping in. The Drip King. Give it up for the Drip King. Let's get it going. We got Caleb Hammett here, the Drip King live in Boston. How we doing? Super excited to be here. Podcast with Mitchell. It doesn't get better than doesn't, this. doesn't get better. Mitchell Pelkey Lacrosse Show live week five of the PLO right before the All-Star break. This is kind of your backyard. How far away from home are we? 40 minutes. Yeah, I used to come here back in the day watching Prime Rabel play. So excited to be back. Man. Prime Rabel, the Boston Cannons back in the MLL days. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you. We've obviously known each other, filmed a bunch of content together. Obviously, a lot of people here know you from playing Division One lacrosse, but more importantly, the Drip King. Kind of take us back on how the Drip King initially started. Yeah, so a few years ago, I was, uh, I was at UMass sophomore year and I was like, I want to make some content. So I started putting some face paint on. The people started to love it. Yeah. The name started to come. Um, I was doing like rating my followers drip, just funny stuff like that that okay. the guys loved. Yeah. Um, and over time, it's became super big. I don't know how, but we keep ripping videos every single day okay. and just growing the brand and trying to grow the yeah. sport of lacrosse while doing it. I say behind us here, who's got the best drip? Give me, give me a, give me a best. best give me a best and worse. Here we got. Here we got. Flex your drip a little bit, I and mean, we we don't just got jerseys. Uh, How about we're back here in the Canons? Look at the, look at the drip he's got. Either, either my boy back here or this little lady right here. I love, hey, I love there, the we go, there we go. There we go. Dropping the STX. No uh, eye black though. No, no eye black. black. No eye black. No eye black. Do we bring any to get a couple forgot giveaways? To. I know. I forgot. Didn't. Didn't. I'm didn't. Sorry, guys. But you just finished out your career at UMass. Kind of talk us through your career at UMass and your four years there. Yeah, so UMass was a huge blessing. Out of high school, that was the only school that pretty much gave me a scholarship. Um, coach Canelo over there, yeah. played for him for four years. And not only was he an amazing coach, but he loved the social media. He allowed me to fully rip it, be myself there. And yeah, four years, I was telling Mitch, the body the body didn't want to yeah. do it. It's year. tough. It's tough. Four fun. years. Four years of Division One school. It's not easy. No, not at all. And uh, we graduate, and then we, we took a little bit of a weird turn, an interesting turn. We did. And not too many people we from did. lacrosse would have taken. From UMass, enters the transfer portal, and commits to MCLA Liberty. Yes, sir. How was that? Walk us through that decision. Yeah, so during the season, I called Mitch. I was telling him, I was like, man, I don't know if the body's going to do it again. I don't know if mentally I could do D1 again. And after the season, I told everybody at UMass that probably hanging the cleats up, probably the end of the road. And, uh, I actually got reached out to on Instagram by one of the players that Mitch knows, Keaton. Yeah, Keaton's the man. He's the man. But uh, talk to them. Um, it was a school that was a big faith school. Um, I saw Mitch's video yeah. last season about the MCLA. Yep. I think he really put put them on the map. Definitely, definitely. I mean, they're a school. They're an MCLA school that has Ohio State like facilities. Their own their own field, their own locker room, their own weight room. I mean, their own jerseys, SCX sponsored school. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer. And, you know, we were kind of talking off camera a little bit, but there was some, there was some thoughts of potentially going to Texas, obviously with the big name school, but what was the final thought on going to Liberty? Yeah. So when I went up there, uh, the biggest thing was Keaton was the man, but like yeah. the coaches, unbelievable guys yeah. that take it super, super serious Winning it all is everything to yeah. them. And the one puzzle piece they were kind of missing was the face-off guy. Yeah. Um, so being a part of that was super cool. And like you said, the facilities, like I visited so many D1 schools and those were top. I know. It's insane. It's insane. And, and Liberty lost in the semifinals this past year. Adding you to the piece, are we potentially seeing an MCLA championship? That's the goal, man. That's the goal. I like that. I think that's through. pretty cool. I mean, obviously what Kyle Hartzell's done, what TLN's done with the Texas doc, you know, what I've done – you know, with, with Liberty and then obviously doing the MCLA Final Four, it's crazy to see. And even Mike's, Mike Rabel said it, super long on MCLA lacrosse. And it's just kind of cool to see. But something I'm interested in, you're in the portal to transfer to another Division One school. What was the portal like for MCLA lacrosse? Yeah, so I didn't really hear from many MCLA schools. Yeah, I actually got like DMs on Instagram from most of the schools. Really, that was where they went. So they don't go. Well, was the there portal. any weird DMs? Any crazy DMs? Uh, not really. I would say the biggest thing is like these schools will. I don't know who runs the Instagrams, but they'll like chirp the other schools that I'll like post in my. Edits oh, really? Go into wow. What's uh, a chirp you remember? You got to remember something. Ah, uh, I don't even know. People just. 
I don't know, just put down other schools, but like we're better. You got to yeah. come here. And yeah. uh, I connected through one of the teammates at Liberty though. Yeah. So it wasn't really big. The yeah. only schools I heard, heard from in the portal were D1 schools, yep. uh, none of the MCLA. And then I started posting edits, like saying I was going to LSU as a joke. Yeah. And that's when like the MCLA schools started hitting me up. Like if this is for real, like come here. We yeah, the cross I team, like that. So. That's pretty sick. That's legit. Will we see any D1 to MCLA to then PLL next year? That would be that would be crazy. But even more than that, guys, I was just saying this. What if Mitchell Pelkey <laughs> takes his fifth year? I'll get the cleats Liberty. from the Raptors and go to Liberty. How Twenty-five. Many likes, guys? How many likes? How many likes to get Pelkinator down that Liberty? Drip King Pelkinator. Could that be the most hated lacrosse team ever? By far. By far. By far. But that's what we do here. I like that. By that's far. pretty interesting. We're talking PLL now. Yeah. You grew up. 30 minutes down the road. Your team was the Boston Canons probably. It was. With it Rabel was. And, and legendary guys like that. What's your biggest memory from back in the day with the Canons? I just remember watching Rabel play. I yeah. mean, like, he would walk through this place and he was like a literal god to us at the times. Like, he would be scoring five, yeah. six goals a game. Absolute animal. The flow. The, the flow was, the was crazy. Drip King. The he was the was OG crazy. Drip King. He was. I would say for you, one thing I, I'm always interested in asking you is, is the hate aspect. I feel like you yeah, get yeah, a ton yeah. of it. How do you deal with it? I think I knew what I signed up for. Okay. And a lot of the times, like I'll read some of the hate comments and I'll be like, I can't disagree with them. Like yeah. it's a valid point, but that's what comes with social media. You got to be a little corny. You got to. You got to put yourself out there. But at the end of the day, I'm super, I get a lot of purpose in what I do and I really enjoy doing it. And yeah. I know it helps people. So definitely staying true to myself through it and the hate, hate comes with anything you do. So. Definitely. I like that. And I think yeah. a thing too that I'm interested in is like, you know, the business side of what you're creating, right? You know, the drip stick, the, the clothes, the kind of you're doing it all. Kind of walk us through what you have going on right now. Yeah. So I always put the meathead kind of on the camera. That was it from the start. But we always had a business mind behind it. Yeah. And uh, two things I loved was the eye black. Yeah. That was what the brand was built off of. Yep. I didn't like a lot of the eye black out there. So I was like, I'll make my own eye black. I'll make it something that has so much more like style and drip to it, I guess, than yeah. these other brands. And there were so many kids that still love it. So yeah. that was the big thing. The clothing line too, I went into the drip brand, coming like out that. with some clothes that I love to wear that a bunch of the guys can wear. And yep. it's been uh it's been a huge blessing, the business side of it. I and like that. Thanks to all these guys that supported. I know, I know, I like that. Anybody we got any of you guys got the drip stick at home? No. Oh, one. we gotta get it. I should have brought it. Come some on, today. we gotta should have tossed it out I to the have. fellas. What's your favorite eye black that you've done? My in in game, in game, in game. Favorite design I've ever done. It was before the Drip King high school. I wouldn't do this in college, but junior year, I was doing the Joker eye black. What's that? Fully around the eyes, full Joker smile. <laughs> really? Yeah, I got some Snapchat memories from like 2016. If you tried that at UMass, what would coach say? Uh, I wouldn't make it out to the field. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would not make it out to the field. <laughs> I love that. I love that. We're talking, you know, we're here in Boston. You know, we had two games last night. You know, super exciting two games. But the Canons took an L against the Redwoods. The Redwoods were 0-4. Got their first win of the season against the Cannons, who are obviously in their home city right now. What were your thoughts on that last night? Not too happy about it. I would say the Cannons are my second favorite team. Yeah. I for the Whip Snakes because of my boy Nardella. Yeah, that's my squad too. Maryland guy. Are you? Yeah, nice. yeah through and through. I'm uh, a little bit of a bandwagoner. <laughs> but, yeah, tough one for the Cannons last night. They're going to bounce back, though. Yeah. I mean, they've lived pretty good this year so yeah. far. So, no, it, it, be chilling. it's been exciting. And I, I think for you, and kind of the next phase of life for you, you're obviously you know still going with the business, still going with the social media. Explain to the fans of Livy Dunn situation. Is there any situation there? Do we have her on the hook? Are you dating her? Is it all for hype? Like, give us the rundown. Very, very, very far gone. Oh, really? It's Liv done. Livy's got a full MLB boyfriend. Okay. Guy's a stud. Yeah. I can't compete with him. So okay. that's over with. We're good friends, though. I love what yeah. she does. And uh, yeah, it was fun while it lasted. What's the relationship status of the Drip King look like right now? We are as single as it gets, okay. Mitch. I don't got a single girl on the phone. There's a lot of a lot of cute females at Liberty. You go to Liberty, <laughs> you love Jesus right here. <laughs> I love ring that. Ring by spring. We're like going for two yeah, rings this yeah. year, When I was at Liberty making the dock, ring by spring was a huge thing. I heard, um, I heard. I was there. Three of the guys on the team were already married. You're going to be there for only one year. Ring by spring. I could see you meeting a girl first week, speeding it up, proposing March. I can't see that. 
It would be funny if I did. You guys will know. You guys see him ring by spring? Bend in the knee a little bit? I think so. We'll see. We'll see. I like that. I like that. Ring by spring. I'm excited to see you down there, down south. MCLA ball. You're really putting on. I feel like we're going to see a big wave of people like yourself going from D1 that still have a love for the sport but don't want to play at the highest level. Go to MCLA. I would say for you, what's one thing you're most excited about going down south, playing, you know, non-traditional MCLA ball? Yeah, I would say just playing for the love of the game. Yeah. Like we talked about, there's other D1 guys that have kind of taken this route. Nobody in the social media area, but people don't realize how competitive it is yeah. and how serious they take it. But one big thing they emphasize at Liberty was enjoying it, yeah. not being your whole entire life. And I think that time commitment, having time to actually be a human being outside of yeah. lacrosse Huge. is one thing I'm super yeah. excited about. I think about. that's one of the biggest things you don't realize about Division One lacrosse. It's a lot. You know, it's every single day, especially, you know, with, with you and I, you know, essentially adding social media, adding a business on to being a student and athlete, like it's a lot. And I think, you know, you going to play MCLE ball, you kind of have this freedom back. You kind of have this, you know, weight lifted off your shoulders and you're playing the game for fun again. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm most excited about having fun playing yeah. lacrosse, which I loved UMass, but D1 lacrosse, especially with the social media, it's more of a job than it is playing a sport, yeah. I guess. No, I like that. I like that. All right, everyone, Drip King for the fans. Clap it up Yo. for them. Big shout out. Thanks for coming on the show. Any any last words for the fans out there? Uh, Stay tuned. Liberty next season. Mitch might be coming to play as well. So you want to see the dynamic duo. Coach, get the 2-5 jersey ready. Let's go. Dynamic duo in action. I'll see you guys next season. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. Next on the scene, we got Jack Rowlett, a Nova boy. How are we doing? We're good. We're good. We're excited to get it going. Give the fans a little little roundup about Jack Rowlett, just a kid from Nova. Where are you from? Give us a a rundown. Just, you know, uh, Burke Center neighborhood, cross from the Coles and the Safeway. It's like, if you know, you know. If If you you don't, you you should. Robinson High School. Robinson High School. We were there in January, December. Golden Stick. Golden Stick. Most expensive stick. I believe that was the Your uh, signature was right next to Rabel's. How do you feel about that? 299s. I like Falling that. after Big the Dog. Legend. He, was t- the, he was the OG. He was the OG. Full respect where it's, yeah. where it's deserved. Absolutely. When you're done playing and your coaching career ends in like 30 years, this is your spot. I would love to be. Yeah. I, I would love to I'm be. I'm telling you, like this is your the, spot. Like the AJ Hawk on Pat McAfee, yes, like yes. not part of the original gang, but like comes in good vibes. Yes. I want to be just known as a guy that you enjoy being around. If that, that's all I have, that's great. That's what Nova does. I like that. Play to UNC, play in the ML for a bit. Nah, my I was the uh, the flip year. You were the flip I got year. Drafted by both, 68th overall in the MLL to Denver Outlaws. How you guys doing? Wait, what about the PLL? Oh, like seventh or eighth, something like okay, that. To okay, the chaos. Okay. Yeah. Really, really interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's a fun fact. Yeah, I was. Thought my life was over. I didn't have any sort of internship plans. Okay. I was like 70th overall. I'm not going to make it in this league. <laughs> and now the PLL. First question, what's the biggest difference you've seen from year one to now? What is it, year six? Yeah, year six. What's the biggest difference you've seen? I mean, the talents had to be from super a elevated. Le- yeah, from a league perspective. I mean, I, I was listening to the broadcast last night. Yeah. Um, this is like 23 rookies have already scored. I think that's unbelievable. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the guys that aren't even scoring are still having crazy development. I, I think it's two things, right? I think the COVID year in college mm-hmm. yeah. probably allowed guys to get a little bit more physically mature. So they come in ready to roll year one. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest flip. And I think guys have more confidence these days. Yeah. Like, I'm watching a kid like see, uh Carpenter on the yeah. uh, Atlas. I mean, that kid has to be playing with more confidence than anybody in the league. It's crazy. He, every ball that's on the ground is his. He knows he d- 200 belongs. points in high school. Do you see that? He had 200 points in high school. Yeah, come on. Like, I thought I was good. Like, <laughs> now we're going to talk about something like that. Fuck. Nah, I'm just kidding. But like, again, yeah, like a guy like that's playing with so much confidence. Yeah. It, it's just cool to watch. It's yeah. cool to see lacrosse grow like that. Yeah, it, it's insane to see. And I was uh, making a video with Shane Knobloch. Good guy. I, mean, I don't know if you if you knew about this. Very good we're guy. Fil- filming a video. They scrimmaged BU. He made a sick play, looked at the bench, and chirped you guys. And the only thing your team said, you said something. Do you remember what you said? You said, I'll see you in the league. I don't totally remember that specific Navi play. You so said, I'll, I'll see you in the league. And, and Navi was like, I don't know if that was a compliment or I should be worried. No. So I complimented both him and Ross Scott. So yeah. we did um, a half a play, man to man down, yep. half a play. Kind of scrimmage, break yeah. it up, split it up. Ross and Shane both, I thought, had phenomenal first halves. I walked up to both of them. I go, you guys plan to play this summer? They both give me a thumbs up. I go, that's all I needed to know. See you guys in a little bit. <laughs> I was, and I texted Towers in the bus ride back. I mean, look, we played five quarters, and I'm not going to tell you how many goals they scored because yeah. that's embarrassing for me. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But I called Towers in the bus. I'm like, hey, two guys, need them, got them, done, lock yeah, it in. And I he, like that. He was, he was about and it. And we so got good. both of them in the draft this year. You know, for you, you know, 
getting to the vet scene where you're not, you know, a middle guy, you're kind of, you're getting up there. It's okay. It's okay. How does it feel to kind of take that role, you know, with a, a younger team, you know, in these next couple of years? Yeah. I think I'm in a fun spot, right? Uh, I know what it's like to be like that rookie, right? Because like the rookie into the COVID, into the third year, it was like a weird group of guys came in the league in different years. Like me and Grant, I met are the same year, but yeah. he's a class after me due to everything that happened, right? Yep. So I, again, I'm in a spot where I don't think I've played a ton of lacrosse, but so I get the stresses that young guys got at the same time though I've been through. Like I know what makes me comfortable on weekends. I know why I play better yep. sometimes than others. So it's like just being able to show that, you know, still coaching, being around college as much as I am. Like, you yeah. know what these kids yeah. are thinking. It's and, the same and you're, you're in the mix 24 seven, obviously yeah. an assistant coach at BU playing at the same time. You know, for you right now, a question I have is like the transfer portal. Obviously we see the craze, this and that. Has it died down? Has it died down a little bit? I mean, we got two of your buckets. I, 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 I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Caputo and Burnsy. Caputo, Burnsy, and Fritzy. Fritzy was already there. Who did the recruiting? Yeah. You were Fritzy. Fritzy's a big part of it. Yeah, Fritzy's yeah. a dog. I mean, yeah, he, Fritzy's he's, a dog. he's been that guy. Hey, I'll say it now. I will be at BU this fall making a documentary. That's how I need I'll be there. there. I'll be I, there. I can leave now satisfied with the whole, how the whole day went. <laughs> I will be there. You guys are an up and rising program that I truly think is, is a final four potential next couple of years for sure. Look, I, I think that we're in a city that allows us to recruit unbelievable talent in terms of just what the city presents itself. Yeah. Um, I think BU as an education is phenomenal. I, again, I think that the more time people get up here, we've only been a D1 program for 10 years, right? Which is crazy yeah, to think the, about. And people don't know we're that young. They kind of think we've been around the whole time and are just starting to kind of get into it. It's like, we've put some name on the map in yeah. 10 years out there. So again, excited for the future. I'm hoping to be here as long as I can. Yeah. And, and right, I've definitely drank the juice. I, you know, I want to be part of it. So it's yeah, exciting. No, and uh, you got a place. You're in Boston full time now, right? Fenway Park. Fenway Park. You're right next to the action. Oh, yeah. Be you this year. I was rooting for you guys in the championship. I don't know what's his name, but he did the old, the celebration like this. Roy Meyer. Yeah. We, Shout out. I'm going to wait to see how you finish this question before I answer. <laughs> what do you, what do we think out of the Terriers this year? This next year? Ooh, good question. So I, I'm excited because I think you guys are, are a team that's like rate can potentially get over the hump. So I don't think you're there yet though. So I think it'll be, I think we'll have a better overall result of the season okay. than we did this past year. Okay. We lost a lot of talent, no doubt. 100% yep. lost some guys who could play. Um, I think it's really similar to my freshman year at Carolina, actually. I came in after the, like, the Sankeys and the Bitters yep. and like yep. the Ryan Kilpatrick. Kind of the rebuild team And everyone told us, like, you guys are be bad. You guys are down here, down here. And again, right, you've seen a college cross, even in the, uh, you know, even in the PLL, every week someone yeah. you can win. I think that we'll have a better culture. I think yeah. guys will be excited to be there, right? And again, like everybody plays better as the underdog. So like, if you know you're the underdog, it's like that's what you want to do. Oh, absolutely. It's exciting to do absolutely. that. Absolutely. Let's say you take the football out of Ohio State. What's a more fun school? If you took the football out of Ohio State, th then it's BU. Because Columbus is a – look, I okay. think Columbus is a sneaky – Sneaky, sneaky city. phenomenal town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even think it's like sneaky good. It's sneaky great. Okay, okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Good, not great. Columbus, Jack Rillette, Columbus is phenomenal. Okay. I think that what you can do outside of campus at BU trumps what you can do outside yeah, of campus true. at Ohio that's State. True. That's true. I mean, and, you got essentially and again, I have everything to take here. this angle for it to win this conversation. <laughs> so. No, I like that. Okay, if I'm a recruit right now, let's say Pelkey's doing his fifth year. Yeah. He's in the portal. Jack Rillette's recruiting me to come to BU. What's the pitch? What's the pitch? First and foremost, I mean, BU City of Champions. You just saw the C's win, right? Yeah. So let's City just, of Champions. I like that. That's not something I'm thinking. Let's just talk about what happens in Boston as it is. Okay. okay. Celtics just won. Yep. Bruins, you know, could be up and yep. down. Pats historically. Yep. The uh, Boston Marathon, one of the biggest events in the country in terms of what people do. Yep. Uh, the tour, or the oh, head of the Charles is the yep. biggest right crew and skull race. Boston in the Marathon. Hired thing. They do the entire rowing race starting at BU's campus, right? Yeah. We have a top three or four hockey team in the country, right? We're number one last year, number one overall pick in hockey coming back. Talk about major five sports, right? So got one of the major sports. We're one of the best teams in the country, yeah. right? We have a 9,000 seat hockey arena. We okay. sell out every single okay. game. Um, and again, right at somewhere like Ohio State, you got 130 kids taking yeah. all the money that lacrosse guys can't have. Yeah, that's true. You got that's 23 true. hockey players. Yeah. The rest of the money comes to us. Yeah. Come to the lacrosse team. Administration loves us. They want yeah. us to be good. They think like you. They think we're a sneaky in another 10 years when we double what this program's been, we're going to be in that, you know, Elite Eight Final Four yeah, build. Yeah, yeah. The field. Nickerson's one, a good spot. One of my favorite fields, Nickerson Field. My first away game was at Nickerson Field. It was the coldest game I ever played. I remember going in the away locker room, putting my AirPods in the case that fell in the toilet. That's something I'll never forget. The facilities, 
how are they? I'm excited to see how they are so in the fall. So you're a way locker room. I've never been there. No, I don't know what you. I don't know what to tell you there. Okay. Like you could tell me it, it was the side of a trash can and boom. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, locker room's great. Yeah. Multiple hockey arenas, yeah. brand new weight room. Yeah. Everything everything that we touch on a day-to-day basis yeah. is as top tier as it could be. Yeah, I like that. And, and kind of going to the portal, you know, sad to say three of my Buckeyes I play for now would be you. What's the portal like now that, that kind of COVID is done? You know, for BU as a program, are you guys attacking it as much or what's the mindset? Yeah, I think every kid in the portal is a case-by-case basis. I, I actually think it's hurting some kids more than it's helping. Interesting. I think a lot of kids see the portal as an opportunity to only go up. Yeah. When realistically, if you're at a place that they love you and you love what they're doing and you Stay like the there. school. Yeah. You know, I, I think the idea in lacrosse of chasing something bigger might not always be the best scenario. Yeah. You're looking at a guy right now, Charlie Bertrand, right? Talking about mass, Mary Mac dominant, like yeah. 280 points in four years. Went to Virginia, had another great year. And now he's a Team USA guy, yeah, right? It's like, it. So if you're at a Merrimack and you're having success and yep. you're playing really well, it's like there's something to be said about being the guy somewhere. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like every kid that gets recruited in high school probably was some version of the man in high school. Yep. It's kind of fun to be that in college. It's Definitely. Like, do you not want to just like, I don't know. For me, I wouldn't want to take a step back and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, and I'm the 13th defenseman now. Yeah. Like, like no, I kind of want to keep playing. It's yeah. like fun to play lacrosse. No, definitely. And, and, and on the portal stuff, we obviously just had Drip King on. The D1 to MCLA route, he obviously just yep. made that. Will we see more of that, you think? I mean, I think you saw the kid from Texas, uh, yeah. from Michigan, Jacob Jackson, yeah. a couple years ago. Yep. Right? I, th- I think it's an awesome opportunity. Kids have the ability to go somewhere, get an education, do what they need to do, right? Yep. And they have support from either their college coaches, administration, some sort of um, you know, educational support, right? I don't think it's a negative. I think kids almost need to like realize that you are in a good spot sometimes. Yeah. There are a lot of good spots and yep. you don't need to be where your one friend tells you you need to be, exactly. right? It's like if you're happy with who you are and where you are, like do that. Yeah, yeah. More so obviously week five, PLL. Let's kind of talk about last night's games a little bit. Got it. Did we expect the Redwoods to win flat out? What were you thinking there? Again, this league's too this league's too good. I mean, it, we're doing pickums each week, and, and I'm telling you what, my my rankings are terrible. Like, it's so <laughs> hard to pick. I, I, the league's too good. Yeah. They got too many guys that could play, right? I think you saw Chris Gray blossom for the first time this yeah. year. Yep. I think that again, if people are just gonna talk about him in general, right? All time leading point scorer in the NCAA, yep. multiple time all star in this league. It's like yeah. you gotta let the guy move a little yeah, bit, yeah. right? Uh man, Coach Nat's been doing this a long time. Yeah. Man. Like he's gonna put something good together. I was more surprised by the night game being yeah. a blowout. Yeah. That was... That's pretty crazy. I mean, Entman. F- he looks good. He looks good. Uh, again, though, so we're talking about guys that are scoring goals as rookies. Yeah. Entman comes in first game. I think he was like 85, yeah. 86%. Yeah. Luke Weirman, first time going against Trevor, and he beats Trevor. Oh my and it's God. like, we're what just a- talking about like the amount of talent in the league is phenomenal. Yeah. It's like not even goal scores. It's like, that's a kid that was at Maryland, kicked everyone's butt at Maryland. Yep. Everybody knew who he was, came yep. in, he's like, yep, still got it. How you doing? It's crazy. I think we always talk about on the show, the talent in the league right now is absolutely insane. Yes. You know, obviously we go to Hopkins, they'll give out the golden golden jackets, some of the MVPs, the Hall of Famers, guys like Mark Millen, you know, Spelina. The years of playing 15 years in the league now, do you think they're over? It's a lot harder for sure. Do you see yourself playing 15? Do you see other guys playing at least 15 years? 15 personally, no. Nah. I'm like going to be a 10 on 12 guy. Okay, I like I that. I think that's probably me. So That's Hall of I'm Fame s- status. You, you get above 10. I think that's Hall of Fame status. I'm signed on to go through nine. So I'm okay. on year one of a three-year deal. That'll okay. get me through nine. Um, then another three-year deal, you'll retire at 12. You'll be all set. I, I think and then maybe a little kid. The body. And then a kid. Yep, you're looking. Yeah, my girlfriend's behind the scene right now, staring at you, Mitch. But that's fine. But no, I like uh, that. I like that. You're 12, though. I like that because I think in the NFL too, like you have to play a long time to be able to get the Hall of Fame status, and I feel like you want that, and I think you're good yeah. enough to get that. I appreciate that. But playing long enough is hard. Obviously, in, in your schedule, being a coach it's, and a player. Again, all, most of the guys that have gotten to the pros at this point and have had those careers, a guy like Rob Pinot guarded the other day. He was like, "Yes, yeah, you're 12." I think everyone admit they got yeah. a little lucky somewhere along the lines and yeah. not lucky in terms of what you've been given or what you do, but lucky in terms of like, I, I played in front of the right coaches yeah. in high school. Yep. I didn't get hurt. Yeah. Right. Well, like, I'll say flat out like Pinnell's 12 years is going to be a lot different than your 12 years. Yes. A lot different. Yeah. Talent wise, for sure. I'm just in, in, but in terms of Rob being able to stay healthy, and I, I, yeah. I don't know he's yeah, been yeah. banged up. I'm not saying that's like, but there's a lot of things that go into it where like there are external circumstances that are benefiting yeah. you in yeah. that. No, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. And I think too, like, Go off the night game, the Atlas over the Outlaws. Like, did we see it coming? I didn't see it coming. 
that being said, I think the Atlas can do that to every team if you don't play them right. Yeah. I think that that's a group. I think seven teams in the league, including the Chaos, I'll put us in that boat, could have great nights where we could beat the Atlas. Yeah. We could have bad and days we saw where, where that scores big. Yeah. I think the Atlas right now have the most consistent combination of ways to be successful, whether it's defensively, Retro could guard the number one, Gavin yep. Aller could guard the number one. Yeah. Uh, I think Maycar is a great flex between close and LSM, depending on if he's got a double pull and stuff like that. I would say for you playing in the league, obviously this year, who in your opinion is the hardest, you know, and obviously, you know, your guys down there on defense, who in your opinion is the hardest trio to guard this season? I mean, obviously a lot of big talk with the Atlas, you know, you have, you know, O'Neal with outlaws. Again, so difficult that every guy will have yeah. a different answer. So like for me personally, I hate guarding Zed. Really? Yeah, that's my... That's, wow. So, like, if you're short and quick, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, that's what I like to do. I like to go side by side. I like... If you want to play angles the whole game, yeah. I'll play footwork. I'll yeah. do that. There's something to be said about someone that's just bigger, stronger. Yeah. And, like, at some point, you can't play any better defense. And he still scores. It's like, you know, he's 240. He runs up the hash. He has unbelievable skills. I think just a combination of him and Rambo, again, like that team has started, you know, two yeah. and two, maybe I think they're yeah. two and two, something like that. Mm -hmm. They'll figure it out. Yeah. But again, that that's a individual matchups where every year it's like, OK, yeah. here we go again. I know. It's, it's interesting. Like you hit him as hard as you can and hit him yeah. as much. Towers, juice guy. You're a juice guy, too. Try to be. Who brings the most juice? I know you can get to that level. I think you have to allow the head coach to naturally be that. Okay. That being said. Okay. Okay, I like that. Uh, Charlotte, game two, Atlas. There was a KJ got in a little pushing, yeah, shoving yeah, thing. Yep. And Towers, I, he knew I was hot coming to the locker room. Anytime there's like a little bit of a scrap like that, like I'll be hot. I like to have our guys' backs. Yeah. I've already been fine this year, so I can't get in any more fights because I don't You're have a good guy. Money. He's a nice guy from Nova. Let yeah, him go. Come on. And Towers looked at me. He's like, you want it? Just not even like you want to talk. Like, do you want to just take this yeah. over? And I had a freak out. I was just like, you know, KJ's pulling us into this. We have to have his back. Like, yeah. that's your teammate. Like, yeah. during war, you got to go follow him. So, you got to let Towers be the guy. Mo more people respond well to Towers yeah. than me. Yeah. Uh, but, again, I, he, he allows me to open up a little I bit. Like that. I like I, that. I'll give you a funny story, though. One, uh, first practice uh, the fall, I'm new coach, new yeah. kids. I'm giving a compliment to a freshman, like James Lapina. That was awesome. But I said it really loud and aggressively. I was like, yeah, James, that was freaking awesome. Hell yeah. He came up. He's like, Coach, I'm so sorry. What did I do wrong? Oh, really? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you're just screaming at me. Yeah. I'm like, you got to listen to what I'm saying, but my tone is going to be the same whether you do something good or bad, but yeah. my words are different. Interesting. So I just tried to bring the juice, like, let's go, like big energy. You made yeah. a great play. Yeah. And this kid's like nervous, like I'm mad at him. But now it's like, now he knows who I am. Yeah. And like, now yeah. it makes it easy. I mean, as a freshman though, it's you, you don't really know what's first, the right move. First yeah. practice. First he was practice. Terrified, too. Yeah. Sure. You're, 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 you're shaking in your boots. Um, obviously, your bye week. Yep. What have you been up to this bye week? Do you like how it's your bye week when it's in Boston or no? Uh, I would have liked to have played when it was close. I didn't have to get on a flight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No offense to Western cities, but yeah, like yeah. not doing red eyes is awesome. So like, you know, drive, I was thinking about that. I was eight minutes down the road when yeah. I had just told I had to come here. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah. No, not much on the bye week. Moving into into a new apartment we go. next week. So just doing that, getting yeah. organized, trying to do some of that stuff. There we go. I like that. What, what about you? What did you do this week? I did nothing. Really? I was working. You take it I easy. I was working. Where are you living full time? I might be moving to Baltimore. Congratulations. Yeah, I might be still at home in Nova though. Still at home. You know, the Italian. Yeah, you know, you mom's got it. the laundry. She's got the chicken parm. You, you know, it's it's kind of it. free rent, you know? You um, all in all, what can we expect out of next week in the in the season moving forward for the chaos? Yeah, I think the chaos have shown a lot in the first, you know, five games we've played. I think our highs are awesome, right? Yeah. We go out 16, 10, 16, 11, first game of the year. Guys are hitting Singles doing all the right things. And I think that we're a group that just needs to play together a little bit. We got four rookies on offense. We got a, a couple of second year guys, you know, Jules and Josh are yep. just together. But yep. I think that from a talent perspective, I put us up with everybody in the league. And once we just can click a little bit and we get a little bit more organized, we'll be all, all set. set. All Love set. the defense. Yeah, it'd be good. Be you this year. Excited. Are we, are we taking any more Buckeyes? Like, let, let's hold off, you know? Hey, if you go in the portal, you got a chance. <laughs> That's all I know. If you go in the portal, I like you got that. A Jack Rellett, folks. As calling out, we're going to finish with Rabel. Anything you, you want me to relate to Rabel for you? No, he's the OG 99. Yeah, he's he knows OG 99. That. Yeah. 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 No, I put it on because of him. It's I all like good. That. I like that. All right, Jack Rillette, folks. We got RJ in the scene, folks. Oh, it's good hey, to be here. Give it up for RJ. Wow. Woo! It's really good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Relax, thanks, man. King. How are we doing? Dude, it's good to be here with you. I appreciate that. Um, it's it's been great um the, like watching the journey of the show and playing yeah. a small part in it. Yeah. And definitely. uh and actually being here with you now in episode nine. Yeah. Pretty crazy though. We've been talking about this since. November? Yeah. 
Yeah, this show's been a been a long time in the making. Long time in the making. Yeah. Our relationship goes back to 2019, though. In New York City. What were your first thoughts on meeting the Italian in the city? It was like two degrees out. It was RJ freezing. had these like um TLN jacket on. He had the TLN jacket, but he had these gloves where the fingertips showed. It was like that movie <laughs> Home Alone. Marv, he had Marv gloves on. I did have Marv gloves on. And you came to the TLN offices yeah. in Manhattan. And yep. we walked around Madison Square Park, yep. walking and talking to the camera. Yes. And uh, we can probably show some of those clips. Yeah. Um, what a what a great day that was. We what counted was, down on the TLN what top thoughts five. On Mitch Pelkey, though. I was nervous, oh, not gonna lie. You I'm were? Very, very really? Nervous. Yeah, I was very I was meeting the guy. Well, my first my first reaction was this kid's got juice. Yes. This yes. kid's got you juice. Bring it. And and I so that's just half the battle in life, right? Yeah, is just yeah. bringing the juice. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't have that. Yeah. Um, and and we just flowed. Yeah. It was the first day we met, and then we jumped on camera and started walking around New York. And now we're here. Yeah, man. Now, now we're, we're here. How long has it been? Six, six, seven, no, it's been like seven years. Yeah, seven years. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. We spent a lot of time over Albany Peel a weekend, made the Whip Snakes dock. Yes. One thing I took about you, you, lo you, you a lot of caffeine. A lot of caffeine. Probably too caffeine. much. Is that okay? Is that a thing we need to worry about? Yeah. How many milligrams a, a day you think? Probably 200. But here's Jesus. the thing, I, do, it's, it, I don't it fast need twitch? it. Yeah, fat, Elite. we love fast Elite. twitch. Shout um, out. By the way, I, was, I remember giving away fast twitch to, yeah. uh, to some kiddos and then I read like the first day when we got, when we got the shipment in, I was like, oh shit, that, that's, it's, it's heavily caffeinated. Like it's not for like, it's not to be not passed out to young kids. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, I, I actually wake up every day and play EDM music and like really? start bumping. Yeah, every day. Really? So I'm actually, I'm naturally caffeinated. I just like taking it one step Okay. Too far. Okay. We had the Mitchell Bogey lacrosse experience camps just at Baltimore, Charlotte, yeah. and Philly. I had the big JBL boom box over mm. my shoulder. We had Fisher cranking. Oh, I love it. A lot of gritties out big there. Big Fisher the fan. Yeah. Who's your big EDM guy? He's Rufus Dussol. Really? When it comes to juice, though, Fisher. Yeah. Comes to juice, Fisher. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. We're in what year six, PLL? Year season six. Season six. Season six. How much has the league changed? Um, maybe behind the scenes or in front of the scenes. Mm. Obviously, you've been through everything. Yeah. I would say the biggest, the biggest fundamental shift for the league has been. I'd say, especially in the last couple of years, has been punching through to the mainstream. Yeah. So pro probably the most tangible element of that this year is consistent coverage on ESPN and yeah. SportsCenter. Crazy. Like, but when Bill Tierney was hired, yeah. I had so many friends reach out. They're like, hey, man, I'm at the airport. I'm at my house. I'm watching the Bill Tierney news on SportsCenter. Yes. We're not talking about a freaking top 10 mention. <laughs> We're just like in SportsCenter yes. programming. That's a big deal. Yes. And that's that's become the norm this year. It's the norm. And I like reminding people that hasn't been the norm. Just it hasn't. Lacrosse being a part of SportsCenter and being at the ticker at the bottom. It, it's, it's a big it's deal. It's crazy. I remember watching, I think it was what, November, Paul was, was doing the cities. Mm-hmm. Just popped it on. I was on my laptop, yeah. ESPN. I see Rainbow. I'm like, what's yeah. going on? The cities are live? Yep. How much has the cities been a big impact? Obviously, cities have been year one this yeah. year. How much yeah. of an impact do you think the league has felt with having home cities? Oh, it's 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 great that you're asking that here in Boston because last night was was it looked outstanding. It was it was the, it was the, the single most authentic homecoming experience yeah. to date. And yeah. we don't say that at every market. Um, we, We're we, two Maryland guys though. Baltimore's two Maryland guys. Maryland will rival yes. that. That has is a to, guarantee. But man, the 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 oohs and ahs in the stadium, and then even being distracted a little bit during the game. I'm looking at my phone when there's a goal. You freaking knew it was for the oh, cannons yeah. because yeah. it was it was like you were in a pro game and the home team is scoring. Crazy because it was a pro team and the home and the home team was scoring. We just yeah. haven't had that today. Yeah. Damn, it felt good. Yeah, it felt no, really that, good. That's man. exciting. That's exciting. But we talked about a little bit though. Redwoods first win. That felt really it? good. You know, you as a, as a lacrosse guy through and through, X's and O's yeah. guy, did you feel that coming? No, and neither did Vegas. I think the line was pl was plus two and a half for really? them too. So it was a fat line, wow. fat wow. line. So wow. so Vegas didn't think they had a chance. And um, I, I will say, it as someone that goes up to capture post game reactions from yep. players. Damn, I, I was glad they. I was glad they got the win. I would have been yeah. pumped for the Cannons because they're home. Yep. Would have been a really great moment with the with the crowd, their first home game. But man, the excitement, it's Nakai, crazy. Knack, all oh of guys, the Woods. The I, it was win. it was a great moment, man. We talked about it the last episode though. Last week, RP three didn't record a point. Mm -hmm. The last Saw time that. he did that was ten years ago, twenty fourteen. How crazy is that? You know, following a guy, you've been in the lacrosse circuit for a while, yeah. following a guy that long, and he hasn't had a point in ten years. Rob is a Rob's a baller, man. Yeah. Rob's a baller. I remember walking through the streets of New York. Rob was always a he was always the first to say yes to come on TLN. Yeah. Yes to say to any video concept or idea we had to, to, to push the game forward, to grow the TLN accounts. And even at PLL, he's just been he's been such a gem to work with. So to see him see that uh, have that continued success throughout his career, um, you've just gotten used to Rob putting yeah. up points every game. So it's so he crazy. looked at that stat line. I saw the post on uh, on Twitter. I was like, wow, that's it's, it's a shock to see yeah, that. out of Definitely. Him. 
experience. It definitely is. The rookie class this year has been really strong. Yeah. We haven't even seen that at, at a Shelly, O'Neill, even Cav. Who's the rookie you love filming with the most? <sighs> you know, man, we called this the greatest draft yes. heading into Bristol. We, we when, heard when, Peacock say it. It's oh, truth. And, and it, it's lived up to the hype. Yes. Um, lived up to the hype, man. And uh, I, if I had to pick one rookie... I'd say Schellenberger. Yeah. What a pro, man. Yeah. I was I was on the I was on the field in the middle of the Atlas game last night. And this was after the, Z the Xander Z Dixon alley oop. And I think this was after Teet's fifth point. Yeah. Shelly had a few. And those got the Atlas offense is so low maintenance yes, yes. and so freaking chill. They're so buttoned for, up for, the, for the damage that they do every I know, week. It's crazy. And they they just mill around and they don't they 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 get a little fist pump for for a goal every now and then. But like That's man, it. those guys are lethal and they quietly go about they're, their they're business. They're quiet. I would say T. Xander and Shelly could be the three quietest guys in the league all playing the same Yeah, line. man. But the stat line ain't quiet. No, no, it's not. I mean, how about Teet breaking the record? And again, he did it so casually. When That's he picked up he that is. one GB off the almost caused turn and just put it in the back, I was like, Gosh. this guy is I too- love, I love when you talk about X's too cool and O's. for you school. Yeah, man, I'm a big X's and O's guy. Yeah. Big X's and O's guy. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. What can we expect out of tonight's games? You know, week five, we're headed in. To obviously All Star Weekend next week, what can we expect out of tonight's games? Ah, uh, the the ES the ESPN two matchup is yeah. one that I'm really looking yeah. forward to tonight. seeing. Um, yeah, the 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 Water Dogs are are an interesting beast, man. Um, it was it was nice we, to we, see them get their first win. The in Cats mini. still have them as top three best team in the league, mm. even though the record is mm. what the worst. Yeah, we're, we're, no, no, they're uh, they've got one win. Oh, so they're tied, tied with, with the, the Redwoods, yeah, right? Tied with the worst, one and one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know though, because. Dukes has them as their favorite team. I, Hoagie, yeah. Miles all have them as top three team, but the record is obviously, you know, tied second to last. Yeah. What do we got on that, you know, Coach RJ? I, th I think the Water Dogs are going to be a problem this year. Okay. I think this they're going to be a problem. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I think the Water Dogs will, will go to the, what do we got first? Quarters? Yeah. Quarters, quarters then semis. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they'll be on this. The Water Dogs will be in That's the semifinals. Nice. Quarters, semis. Yeah. 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 They'll be in the quarterfinals. You can probably expect the dogs okay. there. But but I one note about the match. You asked about the matchups coming yeah. up. And just this weekend as a whole, any freaking given Sunday in this league, oh man. Gosh. I think I think the parody is what, what makes this league special. And the, the fact that you just, you really have no no freaking clue what's going to come really out of these, uh, you know, these I matchups. I talked to Jack. Jack was just in your seat a couple minutes ago. Yeah. We talked about picking teams each week mm -hmm. it's impossible yeah you know college we did college pickums yeah boy one i'll take that <laughs> pll is a whole different beast yeah i mean i could pick the teams i don't think are gonna win and they could all win it, yeah. you never really know and who would it none of the cast picked the redwoods to beat the canons mm. and it just shows you the talent in this league is crazy and we also talked about it too playing 15 years nowadays to back in the day is so different mm. the amount of talent coming in each year like look at this class right like the class next year could be even better. It's just crazy to see yeah. the talent in the league as years go on. Just the just the clips that you see in your regular feed, whether it's uh, even on TLN's feed yeah. over the past three or four years, it, it's just commonplace. Behind the back shots around the world, these kids are in middle school. It's crazy. You, you just you just never saw this and 10, 15 years Junior ago. Stuff? Yeah, oh man. Gosh, you're you're down in Florida too yeah. for the yeah. combine. Yeah. I mean, and, and also seeing your your camps, yeah. it's like uh, we're we're just in a new era, oh, a new, new age era, for sure, for yeah, sure. Man. I, I'll, I'll leave you with this, Dukes. Mm. Barstool Dukes, Dukes mm. two zeros. Grew up playing goalie. Yeah. Did you ever play any years of lacrosse? <sighs> Mitch, my lacrosse career can I don't be know summed if I can up out there. To be honest, my lacrosse career can be summed up in I think two plays. No, one play at a shootout for soldiers <laughs> event oh, in, on Long Island. Yeah. Gotta say on, not, on, not in. in. Yep. And I came in, and it was like one of my first times being in an actual game. Yeah. And I got a pole to the back. Oh, I didn't God. even have the ball, Mitch. I didn't even have the ball. And I looked back at the guy. I was like, are you, are you kidding me? And then I came out. What do you say? Uh, he, yeah, man. First off, I was like, this is a charity event. Yeah. Like, but so you're a nice guy. You got yeah, a lot of problems, but you're a nice but guy. Like a pole in the back. I, it was my, it was the first time when I was just like, wow. Um, I'm just going to cover this game from the sidelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I just have, that, it's similar. Where you were. I look at lacrosse like I look at the ocean. I respect the hell out of it. Yeah. And I really enjoy watching and appreciate the talent and everything yeah. on the field. But I'm just going to, I'm going to capture it from capture the sidelines. Yeah. Okay. So back to my point. <laughs> Dukes in cage. Yeah. You're at 10 yards. You have 10 shots on Dukes. How many are you making? I'll bury at least three of them. Three? You yeah, it's, three. it's not not even, this isn't even to like to hype it up, but I, I would absolutely bury three of them. I, see, I would take you eight or seven. I feel like really? you, you have it in you. Yeah, but I, I wanted to give a realistic number and one that um that I know I could bury. Okay. I could, it could go three out of 10. Okay, three out of 10. We yeah. might need to see that as a separate 
TLN video. Would love that. Would love that, man. What do you got to say to do? I don't right know now? if I want my shooting form out there on the internet. I uh, I try to uh, I try to keep that off. We'll see. I did go to Boys Latin. Yeah, oh, come on. The kids got it. I went to school. I went, in the blood, went, folks, to, don't went forget to school about with Colin Heacock. He used to shove me in lockers. Funny enough, uh, <laughs> I would love to see. Colin Heacock build <laughs> and you're building high school next to each other. Dude, I didn't hit puberty till like I was a senior at Maryland, bro. Sheesh. I'm Colin. Colin sprouted up freshman year of high school. Yeah. So there, it, I you would know. love to see the RJ and Brett combo at Maryland. Mm. You guys had it was a good one, man. Presidents. It was a, it was the a great combo. Probably loved both of you. And guys. we were traveling the country in high school and college uh, for shootout for soldiers, yeah. going city to city. We were kind of like rock stars. Yeah, we no, really definitely. were. Those I were like the good that. old days. Right, RJ, folks, MPLS, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you, Mitch. Let's do it. Dr. Royce, those new hats are sick. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'll get I'm you one. I'm really a hat guy, though. Look at my hair. No, you definitely need a hat on, my man. I think when I find a wife, I might get a buzz cut. What are your thoughts on Why? that? Why? I, I, this is part of the brand right now, you know? I feel like you definitely shouldn't go bald, bro. No, a buzz cut. A buzz cut like is essentially going you, you bald, mean, though. A buzz cut's your cut. No, it's not. I got a fade, but not right now. <laughs> Not right now. All right. We're going to start it just naturally like that. <laughs> He's talking about haircuts. When we did the $1,000 lacrosse influencer challenge, this guy had his beard lined up. I, I could have, it, it would have cut diamonds on the side. How much did that lineup cost? And I'll, we'll toss some picks up right now. The lineup was just, I'm talking 90 degree angle. I'm talking mathematics, science. How much was the lineup? I mean, it had to be over $50. It was over $50. What cut isn't under $50 now? But guess what, what? Guess what it won you? <laughs> It won $1, me $1,000. You know, the cut didn't win me $1,000 because I could look like whatever I want to look like and I'd still win that $1,000. You put me in a situation like that, your boy's going to get that money. Diamond, like that. you can't make a like diamond that. without like any pressure. Wow, folks. We got a live Lax Guy Scotty, Scotty Royster. Some might call him. Mr. Royster, don't forget about it. What are we teaching these days? You know, phys ed and health. You know, during the week, I'm Mr. Royster. But during the weekend, <laughs> it's the your boy, Scott, Black Scott. Sky Scotty. The legend, the legend. We're live here, though. Boston, Harvard. You were here yesterday for day one. How was it? The pictures looked electric. Yeah, and it was awesome being out here in Harvard. This is actually my first time being at an Ivy League school. No, I'm lying. Actually, I've been to Princeton before. But okay. at Harvard. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting smarter, like through osmosis oh, I over I, here. I was walking around. I mean, the the, the language these cats are, are speaking in, the the books I saw, the amount of bookstores. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a nice guy. Ohio State wasn't having that. No, Ohio State and definitely neither was doesn't. Kane College. Oh my God! You know what? It's Kane University. Second, first, first of all, it's Kane University, and second of all, Ohio State is bottom tier con compared to Rutgers. We talk about this a lot. Miles Stevens Tech. Okay. First, Kane College. Okay. Who's winning? Come on, son. Is that even a question? Am I playing too? You're playing. And Miles is playing defense on me? No, no, he's playing attack. Okay. Yeah, he's lucky. You spared him on this one. But Kane University taking away the dub. You guys, you guys forget who Kane University is. You better recognize. <laughs> I've never even heard of that school, but I like it. It's good. It's good. It's good. Day one yesterday. Do we expect Redwoods to win? Yes. We really? You know what? Yes. I I if you take a look at my picks every single week, yeah. I have the Redwoods. Doesn't okay. matter what I like logistically think it's yeah. called blind bias right blind bias i like that because Mr. i'm just Royster, i'm just out. a redwoods fan okay. non-stop so I that's love your it. team you're a new jersey guy you're not an atlas guy you're a redwoods guy yes yes but i'm an original redwoods fan this was before they even had location okay because hoagie's a redwoods guy too hoagie's a redwoods guy because he has a nice brain he has a smart brain so yeah, yeah. i get him, well, I'm, I get a, him. I'm a whips guy what yeah that yeah that's a red flag red flag <laughs> get the baltimore flag out of here it's a red flag I just want to say, when we go to Hopkins or Baltimore, it's going to be the best weekend. Yeah, I definitely. Every every week, every time I go to the um, Hopkins or the Homewood Field for yeah. that weekend, that's where I first met you, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. That stadium's a sellout, it's man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But but the night game last night, the Atlas over Outlaws, did we expect that at all? Like, I'm not a betting man. Do you bet at all? Like, did we, did we lay some coin down? Just, I didn't yesterday. I didn't yesterday, but... I think you're crazy to expect the Atlas to lose two in a row if that's yeah. what you were thinking. No, I mean, I mean, I didn't. Well, I picked them to win. I just okay. want to say that flat out. But also, like, by that many goals? No, you, you don't ever expect any team to beat that team or any team by yeah. that many goals. But what's crazy about this is Brennan O'Neill with only eight touches. I know. How are if, you? If, if you're the talking to one coach, or if you're talking to the team about that situation, what are you saying? You got to go back to the drawing board after that, man. I mean, you're the number one pick in the league. You should be getting the ball in your stick. Like, if I'm a coach, I'm moving him up to midi. You think? Something. Well, yeah, you got to get him more touches. Like, you can put the ball in the back. Of the we saw the Archers game. Guy let loose. But 
Other than that, we haven't really seen too much of him. But I don't know if having him at MIDI is the answer because we saw him play MIDI week one. Yeah. How did that work? Not too good. Not and then you good. saw him play attack week two or three. Yeah. Then he went on. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see. Obviously, we're closing out, you know, week five here. We got the games today. Then we're going to All-Star Week. All-Star Week's a fun week. Okay. You know, we guys let loose. You know, we got some All-Star games, some All-Star competitions. Do you think the fastest shot gets beaten again? Newman. I don't know what. I think it was 128, 25. Fact check. Newman. 121. I know 21. numbers. I know numbers. Black Sky Scotty. It was one. If you shot, what would your score be? I just shot over there. No warm up, you know, with a plastic stick. 96. No big deal. What? Yeah. 96? 96. I still got it. What I, do you think I get? Uh, You're probably getting like 92. That's that's a stretch, honestly. I was thinking 85. <laughs> yeah. 92. I got, um, as I'm getting older, I think I have something called like man strength or dad strength. I'm almost getting there. I just me and you have... wrestled, who would win? What are you, like 5'8"? Five, 5'10". Five, yeah. Give me a break, dude. 165? 185. And 185. you go jogging the every day. The 5'10 Italian. Don't forget oh about it. God. Going in tonight's games, though, I'm big on the whip snakes. I'm a whip snakes guy through and through. Born in Maryland. I think they're catching the W tonight. You think the whip snakes are taking the W? Uh, that's a tough one. But I don't think I have the whip snakes winning today. Really? No. Nah, really? I don't think I have. If you were a betting man, and, and we have some betting viewers out there, if you were to put your whole mortgage on a team to win the championship, who is that team for Mr. Royster? Oh, man. Um, if my heart's in it, of course I'm going to go with the California Redwoods, right? I would win a lot of money back if the Redwoods uh, yeah. end up pulling it out. But we use our brand sometimes here. And what team has been clearly pe- playing the best this entire season? Alice. It's that Atlas. New York Atlas. They man. look good. I mean, they look unstoppable. But the only thing that kind of scares me, though, is the whips. The whips game. You know, the whips are sneaky, dude. I'm not I'm not being biased here. I think it could be whips versus Atlas in the championship. I don't think it can because they're both on the east side, bro. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'll hit a single there. I'll hit a single. But, I mean, I get what you're saying, though. Those are probably the two top teams. Like, yeah. TJ Malone is a problem. He came out of nowhere. What was he, a third-round pick? Yeah. And he's just doing the damn thing. What are your thoughts, though? On the, the, I know I, I bring up a little bit of the Will Manny situation. That's probably one of the craziest situations all year. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think it's crazy that Will Manny is not on a PLL. It shows you how young the league is. It shows you how young the, te- uh, young the league is, and it also shows you – how much talent is in the league? Oh my gosh! Because crazy. You would think that at least one team would be like, "All right, that's our opportunity to get our stud attackman," and no team bid on the bait. No. <laughs> it, know, I mean, crazy. It, it's I don't know. I would say lastly, if you're Pressler, obviously we saw Entman light it up last night. Mm-hmm. What are you saying for the goalie situation moving forward? And then I'll have a second question after this answer. All right, dude, we are starting Liam Entman. The rest of the year. The rest of the year. Okay. You know, Timmy was in a tough position, right, where he played lights out. Yep. But you have pressure coming behind you with Liam Entman, the guy who, you know, debatably should have won the tour and Do you think coming so? right behind you. Do I think so? Yeah. If 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 he's not going to win the tour and as the goalie the, after the year he had, it's going to be hard for somebody oh, other than a Midian attack to ever win that award. So, um, but what was the question? You're so, about to get me going. You know, you pick, you pick, you picked Entman to start the rest of the year. Okay. If you're Troutner in this situation, and let's say that happens, what are you doing? Are you just being the backup? Are you going in the pool? Are you trying to get picked up? Or are you retiring? Uh, I think Timmy's a good teammate. I think he's going to do whatever he he's can. He's a guy too. He's a great guy. I met him plenty of times. Awesome guy. Yeah. But it is at his age. He's got to be close to 30, if not over 30. You think 30 is the age for goalies? I feel like goalies could be Actually, in the league right. for the longest. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we saw Adam Gittleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah what, exactly. 38 or something like that? He's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Don't age me like that. He's, um, but I think Troutner has a uh, couple more years left. Like, I don't think it's personal. I mean, it's just professional yeah, sports, no, man. And he knows it too. But at the end of the day, like, if you're him, are you trying to get a starting job somewhere else? Or are you just going to ride out the backup? I mean, of course, that's always the goal, right? Yeah. To start. But he's not like sour about not starting right yeah. now. I don't think he's pissed off at anybody besides himself. Like he knew when the Atlas picked up Liam Entman. I mean, that goalie room was Liam Entman, Troutner, Crazy. and Drake Porter. Yeah. And that's a battle. We yeah. knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And Timmy wasn't, He, of course, he was aware that he's going to be in a battle for the rest of the year. So I think he's okay with where he's at, but I think he's also going to be trying to compete for that starting spot. Like nobody's yeah. safe ever. It's interesting. It's interesting to see. We got game 
game two, or sorry, game three and four tonight, day two. What do we expect at our night? Who do you think takes it home? Do you think the Canons can get their W in their home city or no? So I think the Cannons are going to come back in this second game. Tough game yesterday against the Redwoods. But yeah. we, you know, my Redwoods pulling through. I'm happy. I'm proud of them. Okay. Redwoods pulling through. And the Maryland game. Maryland's playing against. I'm drawing a blank. Maryland's playing against. Who do they got? Maryland's playing against. Uh, what do you, oh, the Whips, you mean? Yeah, the oh, Whips. The Whips are playing against Archers. All right. Oh, yeah, Whips, Archers. I'm going with the Archers there. I feel like the Archers God. have underperformed this year. But I, I feel like the Archers are just, all the time. Dude, you don't know what you're saying right now. Yo, Captain America, Tom Schreiber, guess where he's living right now? Yo, yeah, you know what? Jersey, you know what? New Jersey, New Jersey. He's, he represents like New Jersey, I like man. that. We got a couple of live Mitch's mailboxes here. Yeah, can we, can we do a third chair here? Keep Scotty on? Is that possible? Yeah. Here, scoot over a little bit, Scotty. Let's do it. We're doing live Mitch's mailbox here. We're going to get Big Dog in the middle. Middle? Yeah, sandwich him a little bit. Big dog. Get him in between two Italians. That's a dog. One Italian, All two right. Italian. Come in here. One guy first. Hop in here. All right, we got live Mitch's mailbox. It's probably my favorite thing we do on the show. What's up, Big Dog? What's your name? How are you doing, Ben? Big Ben on the scene. Nice to meet you guys. Make What's sure you up, hold the ben? mic up. Hold the mic up. Don't oh, you yeah. need it. Big Ben, where are you from, Big Ben? I'm from Lowell, Massachusetts. Lowell, Massachusetts. Where oh, are you yeah. Going to school? Uh, you going to school? Right now, I go to UMass Amherst. UMass just, Amherst. Just met Drip King over there. Good you guy. You kind of look like Drip King. Maybe. 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 On a good day. We're on Mitch's Mailbox, though, where you yeah. come in, leave your heinous takes. Yeah. And we react to them live on set. Okay. Big Ben from yeah. UMass, AK Drip King. What's your wild take of the day? <laughs> wild take. It's a bit of a two part, but I think okay. uh, uh, my man, I, I want to pass any disrespect. I think Matt Rambo might be one of the most overrated players in the in the league, getting a bit old. And I think Matt O'Keefe is a top three player actively in the league right now. Yo, what did he say? I'm sorry. A lot I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Boston. Okay, let's talk on the Matt Rambo first. Yeah. Overrated. I think overrated. I might have used a strong word there. No, but I, I like think your talent. You're a, confident in your words. I like that. Yeah, he, he, he gets a lot of presence. We all know that. He's a big name in the league. And yeah. I... Uh, I think he's a beast, obviously, but I'm seeing just a little, a, a little slower than usual. And some of these young guys coming up are great. Yeah. And like I said, I'm, I've been following my guy Mac O'Keefe for a while, and I think he needs some, uh, some more respect on the name. He gets a couple clips here and there, but yeah. I think he's a top right, three so player. Got for Mac sure. O'Keefe at the third best player in the league. Mm -hmm. Let's say two offensive players are, are before him. Who's your one, two, and then obviously Mac O'Keefe. One, two. Currently, like uh, I just saw the other day, I think we got to give it to Teeter yeah. at one. Teeter's he's got to be one. He's been out of this world, and then. Um, I don't know. Who, who would you guys put at, at a at a close I think to? I, I think I keep um I think I keep uh what's his name? You just mentioned him. Uh Schreiber at two. Oh um, Schreiber. Schreiber's two. Schreiber. I know you I'm saying Schreiber's one. I was talking no. smack on older guys, but Schreiber just he he doesn't yeah. slow down. Okay, so you got that hairy eyeball look in your face. What what are your thoughts? I, I don't think he's top three. I okay. don't think he's top three. Top ten? Yeah. I would say top maybe top ten. Top ten, he's close to that ten yeah. fifteen. Okay. But top three is You don't like that. What do you think, Big Ben? Fifteen. I would I would respect the top the top ten or like a top five call. Maybe my top my top three is a bit aggressive. You know, I've followed him since college. I even yeah, went. I'm from nice low. Guy. I went all the way out to Philly to go watch him play yeah. in the uh, the final, uh, four. final four when he was out there. So I might be a bit biased, but the 15, I just feel that's a bit disrespectful. I mean, the guy can score from anywhere. That low to high is unstoppable. Yeah, but you, when we say top 15, you got to realize that. An all star player, there's like their top 30 players. Like that's he's yeah. better than half about of the all stars. And goalie in front of him, too. You're right. You're right about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking pretty offensively here. No, I like if I'm it. being I like honest. Your take like is it. already like changing, it. I man. I like it. I think at the end of the day, I'm giving O'Keefe top 15. Okay. And I think Rambo's still got years left in his in his bones. He's still got some mileage left in the tank. I think he might have like three, if That's maybe it. two. I love really? the guy. I mean, yeah. Right. I, I met him once, too. How old guy. are you, Ben? Uh, I'm 19. So you, you can't bet yet. No, no, you have to no. bring to 21. No, I cannot Let's bet just yet. Say if you're a betting man. If I was. And, uh, you know, you put all your life savings on a team to win the PLO championship. Mm -hmm. Who is that team this year? You took all that cash you would use on a fun Saturday at UMass. Yeah. And you put that <laughs> towards a bet to win the PLO championship. Who's that team? An unbiased opinion. Uh, an unbiased opinion. I'm gonna have to go with the Atlas. I've, they these guys. They look good. They look good. They man, look they good. look good. But look good. if I had to say bias, so I, my favorite team to say out loud is the Archers, and I want it to be an Archers Atlas maybe finals, and I'm gonna be rooting for the Archers. But 
if the Atlas come out on top, you can't be mad. I like that. Big Ben on the scene. Clap it up. Big Ben. Appreciate you, Big Ben. Who else we got? Who else we got? Who else? We got next cat up. Yeah, speaking of the archers. Oh, look at that. Nice hat, hat, hat man. You are the new TLN hat, folks. You just got it. You look better than me in that, my you man. Look swagged out. We got oh, the Dobson oh. jersey. Yeah. 45. Oh, we got to hold the mic up, oh, okay. okay? What's okay. your name, big man? Ryan. Big Ryan. Where are you from, Ryan? Um, Wakefield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Three Italians up on the yeah. booth. Let's What's go. What's your wild take for today? Um, What's your wildest take, Ryan? I think so. Atlas. Yep. Um, I mean, Outlaws, they're in the one seed right now. I think that Outlaws are going to lose three games, the okay. next three games. Okay. And then Chaos come back. Yeah. End up making it to the final four. Beat, okay. Um, like Red Hoods. Who, who do you think is going to be the championship? Chaos. And? Against Atlas. Okay. You think Chaos. House. You think Chaos. You're a guy from Mass, and you think yeah. Carolina Chaos. Yeah. Why do you think so, Ryan? I think their defense is just going crazy. Yeah. What position do you play? Goalie. Goalie. Yeah. So Mr. Royster used to play college yeah. ball back 20 mm-hmm. years ago. <laughs> if he <laughs> shot on you, how many shots would you save out of 10? 10 out of 10. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Ryon. You're a legend. All right. Are you, got, are you done too. lying to the kid? <laughs> your uh, turn. Your turn. <laughs> Big Ryan from Mass. So you think Chaos and Atlas. Yeah. Who's your favorite player in the league? So you got Dawson. Chaos, you got Atlas, and then you got an Archer's jersey on. Yeah. I'm like tied between three people. Dobson. Yeah. Bla- Big Blaze. Big Blaze, the legend. And then um, Jack Rowlett. Jack Rowlett, he was just on the scene. Yeah. Great guy. He, he um, coaches at Boston. Really? Be you. I-, I heard that on my Instagram for you. It was like him mic'd up like a year or two ago. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, I think it was the final four. Yeah. And he was like, um, I forget. It was like, ah. Oh, he was chirping like some guy, probably. He was chirping yeah. some guy. And he, oh, he was mic'd up with the guy up in the booth. Yeah. He was like, and they were like, Talking Jack, why him. are you in such a hustle to leave? It was like, and he was like, I just moved to beautiful boss and coaching there, like ready yeah. to, yeah. yeah. He's ready to go. That. I could see you playing at BU. He could be your yeah. coach one day. How mm-hmm. old are you, Ryan? Uh, I'm 11. 11. So you got at least eight more years left? Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right. We'll keep playing. Keep it rolling. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Nice job, Appreciate Ryan. You. We got one more? Yeah, we got, we got one more. All right, all right, all right. Come on the scene. Come on the scene. He's got the cannons. The cannons and the Vineyard Vines action. Those rope hats are in, bro. July 4th weekend, folks. We're getting it going. What were your plans for this fourth weekend, Scotty Royster? My plans for the 4th of July. I actually was in Vermont Ooh, for the 4th of July with the honey. With you the know. honey. I like and that. And then from Vermont, we came down to Vermont. You know, when I say we, I mean me. From Vermont, and now we came I'm in, to Vermont. I like uh, that. What's Matt's. your name, sir? John. Uh-oh. John's bringing the juice here in Boston. How are we feeling? The Italians. The Italian the stallions. The Italians. How are we doing? You good? <laughs> doing good. You fired up to be here? I'm ready. Were you here yesterday or no? Yeah, I was here yesterday. What were your thoughts on the cannons? I, I, I was very disappointed in the loss, but I'm thinking... I mean, we beat we beat Philly and Philly. Yeah, I have a plan keep, that keep we're gonna. Close, yeah. I have a plan. We're gonna beat the Phil, uh, the Water Dogs by fifteen, and they're not winning again this year. Wow, folks! Wow, take that's your wow take. <laughs> yep. Okay, say that again, because I, I, that was hard hearing. The you. Philadelphia Water Dogs are not gonna win another game this season, and the Cannons are gonna beat them by fifteen today. If you. If that's correct, I hope the PLL flies you out to the championship because that would be the most craziest take I've ever heard in my entire life. That, Why do you think that? What are your thoughts on that, Mr. Royster? You know, you said it. they would never win a game for the rest of the year. Yeah. That's Wait, such a bad all, take. There's only, f- what, five games left? Yes, but what team this year has gone on a, a five-game losing streak? I mean, Nobody. If, if, the, exactly. if the Redwoods didn't do yeah, it this weekend, that would have been The Atlas it. recently have just been crushing everybody. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the Water Dogs, though. Yeah, but, like, wait until the Water Dogs play the Atlas or a team – like really good. No, no, no. I like this. I like this take. Just a kid from Boston. Interesting. It's a, it's a wild take. I'll be honest. I don't, I don't really know what to say here. Um, it's a tough one. But it's interesting. And I think going off that, I don't even know if there's anything to say. I don't even know what to say. So why do you think the Water Dogs are going to lose every single game? I feel like they just don't have the squad to be a top contender right now. Yeah. I mean, Michael Sowers isn't that good. You know, Kieran McCardo is not that good. Connor Kelly is not that good. You know, it's just tough. I, I know. They... The entire one, like a few players can't build an entire team. <laughs> All right, folks, Mitch's mailbox here live in Boston. Oh. Give it up. Any any last words? Any sign outs? All the fans. Um, 
Hit the frog for the fans out there. Wow, wow. elite toad, elite, elite toad. Elite. That wraps it up. Thank you, big dog. I appreciate you coming on. All right, Scotty Royster signing out. We got the Pointer Brothers coming on next. Any last words? Uh, no. Let's go Woods. Hey, if you jumped off of the Woods oh, train, God. that's on oh, you, God. man. I'm happy you Red jumped Woods off. One. Okay. Um, Sad. but hey, I'm still with the Redwoods. Roll Woods. We're live. The Pointer Brothers, Let's three go. Italians here in Boston. How are we feeling? <laughs> feeling good. We juiced up or what? The stashes look good. Thank you. Thank you. you Where's your good? stash? I only do it in November. Okay, that's November, fair. Guy. That's November. fair. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Got to give back. We're here, though. Yeah, yeah. The Pointer Brothers, give the fans a rundown who you guys are. In my opinion, some of the funniest guys in social media. I give you guys a follow. I appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. We are brothers born and raised in Boston. Yep. Happy to be here. Happy to be back. Uh, we create... Primarily short form content, um, all comedy, all jokes, a lot of fun. We're sports adjacent comedy yeah. creators, right? Yeah. Is yeah. how we like to put it. Sports adjacent, um, I like that. A lot of different sports, versatile, grew up playing all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, also grew up cracking jokes and having fun. So. I like that. I like <laughs> that. I like that. How many years of lacrosse? Me? Um, I don't even have 15 minutes of organized lacrosse. There you go. Belt. That's why we have you up here. Uh, I got one year, senior year of high school lacrosse. Really? What yes. position? D Mitty. D Mitty. Of course. You look, boys look a little sick. That's good, though. That's good. That's yeah, good. That's good. That. That's good. You know, pops in the jeans and everything. We're here, though, in Boston. Boston born and raised. Yes, yeah. Boys lost last night. Did, did, we, did we go in the locker room, give him a pump up speech? Did we give him the side eye? No, I, I think we need to tonight, though. Yeah. Yeah, big bounce something. back tonight. A little something. A little yep. something in the air. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I've come up here a couple times a year. Um, born and raised in Northern Virginia. Okay. As, as an Italian from Northern Virginia, can you give me a couple words about? About Boston. Just oh, about Boston. the city. About the city. I went to Ohio State. Okay. I think Columbus is a way better city than Boston, but I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Just words in general? Yeah. Um, clam chowder. Okay. There clam you go. Clam chowder. Just we'll, start, like we'll start with that. Then uh, uh, Boston Tea Party as well. Okay. What do you got? Boston Tea Party? I mean, I was going to say <laughs> Boston Celtics, you know? If Boston you're, if you're Celtics. If you're looking for a sport, yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's probably better. Sports yeah. Town. Yeah. I like that. Clam chowder, Boston Celtics. <laughs> yeah. Clam chowder, Boston Celtics. Boston Cannons. Boston Cannons. that. Three there Italians. I like that. What are the hats? Average. Give us the rundown. Give us the plug the merch. Let's go. Make plug the, the merch. It's actually, we're, we're about to release it in, in about a month. Um, it's going to go by proudly average. You know, we yeah. got the little side eye. Where is it? Yeah, right, yeah, right here there, yeah, on yeah. the merch, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of just, uh, you know, no, everyone's average at something. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know, so uh, that's, 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 big. we're two average dudes. Your internet homies is, yeah. you know, what we're. Two you? average dudes, three yep. average Italians. You guys got the side eye and I got the frog. This is my Can stuff. we see the frog? Go. Hey, let me see the frog like this. Hell yeah. No, like this. You got to do it with the mouth. I can't do that one. <laughs> oh, you got it. I can't do it. You got a little a mini mullet going on, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come I on, like that. It's a lax thing. It's a lax thing. Come That's on. nice. You know I like it. that. Yeah. Let me see the frog, Eddie. You got to hit frog. it. You got that. I can't do it. Let me see it. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I can't get you guys some frog merch. Yeah. I, I like that. I love that. I would need it. Yeah. Yeah, a little frog merch. Make I like that. Com. Yeah. In day two, though, what are we most, ex most excited about? Candace coming back, second game tonight. What are we most excited about seeing the boys? I'm thinking a. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, a hat trick. Yeah. Out of Marcus Holman. Yeah. 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 I think they're, they're going to need a good performance takedown. Sowers and the in the dogs, but yeah. I'm I'm excited. Yeah. I, I'm pumped. What are you What are you thinking? I'm excited to see my parlay hit. Am I really? allowed to say that? No, here? yeah, absolutely. Come on, big betting guys. You guys are out in L.A. They they're living in the mansions now. You guys got the money. You got the merch. I mean, come on. Sorry, uh, my my ten dollar parlay hit. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, so, yes. Ten dollar parlay if it hits. Thousand dollars, bingo. That's how we do it. I wish. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm excited. I'm excited for a Canada's double yeah. tonight. We're excited it. for the Canada's. No, and for your parlay to hit. Yeah, that, yeah. that was it true. That was true. I mean, it's one step closer to my parlay hit. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yes. That's going to support the weekend. Do, have we met Paul Rabel yet? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Good, good style guy. You guys are from LA. You guys got some unique style. Yeah. Whose style is better, you guys or Paul Rabel? Oh my God. I got to give it to Paul. He looks good. Always he's GQ good. ready. Always he is GQ ready. ready. He's GQ ready. Oh my he, God. I, I've never seen him not throw fits. Yeah. You know no, what I mean? I like that. I like that. that. He's throwing fits like a toddler. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. Can you stand up for us one sec? Give us the rundown. Give us GQ style rundown. GQ. Like, give us from the shirt to the sock to the everything. Okay. Anything that's in the Like pocket. the actual. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where it's from, where you buy it, where everything. Okay. Sneakers, thirty dollars H and M. Oh, those Sneaky. look like the the nice ones. The uh, the Alexander McQueen. Yeah, yeah. Nope, I'm not spending those that money. Doing. Nope, I like that. I like uh, that. We got shorts. shorts, ten sizes too big for me. I think True Religion, and those then might be capris. No, yeah, these I are know. capris. And then I'm a, I'm a big like a uh, five inch inseam guy. You guys, mm -hmm. you don't like it. You don't mm -hmm. like it. I, I can dabble here and there with those. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then shirt, I actually don't know. I just found know. it. Yeah. yeah, took it out of his closet. Northeast guys, but now in L A. Do we have the Northeast swag? Looks like you guys got the L A swag. 
I'm just, I don't know, man. I'm just, I, I'm trying to, I take it one day at a time. Yeah, you take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Don't take too many, uh, you're a nice guy. Too much inspiration. You're a nice from, guy. From anywhere. But. I like that. I like that. Uh, all in all, any sign ups for the fans out there? Pointer Brothers, what do you guys got? Last Boston words. Cannons, 15, dogs, one. Wow. Red, oh, let's a go. Red stick from the dogs today. Cannons, big W. Yep. That's, That's it. That's say. it. That's Q it. day two. Let's go. Dang. Let's go. All right, guys. Let's take a quick break and talk about the best lacrosse company in the world. Three letters, STX. They've been making the best lacrosse products for the past 50 years, pushing the limits in the heads, handles, and protections. If you want to be the best, you got to rock the best. Shop STX.com and get yourself covered all spring and summer long. Thanks, STX, for sponsoring this show. Let's get back into it. And we're back. We got the boys on virtually. First time virtually this year. How are we feeling so far, fellas? I feel oh. good. D- Dukes is used to this with the uh, – I see him on the yeah, crease. He's got the mic and everything. He's got the – He's got the nice <laughs> mic. Look, he's got it set up. Miles got the wired headphones yeah, I got the wired on. headphones. Back in like 2013, the basketball guys would always wear these. You know, I'm rocking them. I'm excited. Me, Hoagie, Miles are rookies. I'm in a hotel right now. Hoagie, where are you? I'm just in my room. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm actually – I'm on Nantucket right now, so I'm on vacation. Oh, dude's on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are Wait, upstairs. Miles. I got the khaki pants on. You know, we're nice oh, out here. Oh, I got to get the, the collar. Did you bring the stick to hit the wall, Miles? You got to keep grinding out there. No, it's what, outside. Okay, always says 100 reps a day keeps the doctor away. No, yeah, I have it outside. The screw is not in it because I forgot one, but, you know, it's staying alive. It's sick. He's getting his reps in. I'm excited. Well, obviously, you now we already recapped Saturday's games. Last time we were on here, we were talking about Sunday's games. So let's recap them now. Before we go into the last two games of the weekend, let's kind of talk about league standings real quick. I know a big part of our, you know, cast has always been we think the Water Dogs are better than they are. As the second worst team, are we are we nervous? Dude, because I know this has been kind of hot on your take. Still not nervous. No, 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 not nervous at all, honestly. I, I'm just doubling down every single weekend. Okay, interesting. I don't think they're a top four team in the league. No, I no. I, see, I agree with Dukes. With. I agree with Dukes. I I do agree that they're still a top four team, and they're definitely one of the most dangerous despite their record. But like at some point, it's like you got to win the games on the field, and the reality yeah. is they're one and four right now. And you know, we know how hard it is in this league. They basically set themselves up where they basically have to go undefeated, and maybe the second half of the season, like. Yeah. Are they going to be able to sweep in at like a six and six, whatever record? Because they're at one and four right now. So they basically got to run the table in the second half. I will say their schedule is much easier in the second half stretch, though. Hoagie, yeah. that is not even doing enough justice to how big of a cupcake the end of the season is. That's what I'm you saying. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm if saying. If you look dude. ahead, and the again, easy. the schedule is right. easy. You got Denver, which I, I'll, I'll mark up as a W. I agree. Then you got the Atlas twice. <laughs> I'll at least give them one. And then you got Miles. Can you back me? Miles. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. The Atlas are looking good right now. We'll get into that, but right now. No, I'm I'm with Dukes, but like my problem is, and I'm I'm I've been on Dukes with the Water Dogs wave this whole time, and I think they're good, but like at some point it's like you gotta you gotta win the game. And they 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 completely crumbled on Saturday to three goal lead in the second half and got completely out outscored the whole rest of the way, blew that game, like at some point, it worries me. It's like, I don't know. And we got to see what happens with Sowers. That's yeah. a big question mark with his injury. I don't know. To me, it's like you could talk it all you want, but they're second to last in the league. And it's oh, a tough hill to win every game. We'll, I don't we'll, more into that. we'll dive more into the uh, Water Dogs game here in a sec. Uh, but kind of going off that point, uh, I, I'm from blanking on his name. Young man came on to Mitch's mailbox live in Boston or right out of Harvard Stadium. His hot take was the Water Dogs are not going to win another game this year. That, that's crazy. That's just, I, I was like, I, said, I looked at the camera and I was like, PLL, if this happens, fly this cat out to the championship. <laughs> we think every- I mean, look, if no. you look at the rest of their schedule for the Dude, Water Dogs. Dude, Dave Portnoy size bet on that. Not happening. I, I, I would pretty much mortgage my own life, both sets of nuts, like my own house. I would mortgage everything that they at least win two more games. Okay. All right. I can see them beating the Atlas. Yeah, but they, yeah, but that's the thing. There's five games left on their on their. Hey, they're not beating the Atlas, so that's so they have three chances. No, no, no. But let's just say this. Let's just say this. There are five games left. I just looked at the schedule. They have two games against the Atlas, 
Two zero. Uh, game, game against the Whip Snakes, which is not going to be an easy game. Yeah. Outlaws, I think, could be tough on the wrong day. And the Redwoods just beat the Cannons. So you're you if say they go what is that three and two on that schedule, they're still four and six. Yeah. Like, and that doesn't cut you, it right. And even if they go four and one, they're still five and five. Like they've dug themselves in such a hole here. I, I honestly don't know. Seriously, be and they've the also playoffs. put themselves into position, Dukes, too, which you're not talking about. Which even if they get in the playoffs, they might have to play Atlas, Archers, Boston just to win a championship. And it's hard yeah, to beat that, all three of those. That does not matter. Like all you have to do in this league is get into the playoffs. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, oh, I, the, I agree. I, the I agree. margin, the margin between the best team and the worst team in this league is so so slim. That it, it really doesn't matter, and this is this has happened before. Like the chaos come into the playoffs, they have two wins and they make the championship game. Yeah. So this isn't anything yeah. new for this league. I I firmly believe at the end of the day, like that the Outlaws and the Redwoods are miles below everybody else. Oh, I agree. Right I think the other thing to point out besides just the Water Dog stuff is there's eight teams in the league. Only three of them have a winning record at the All Star break right now, which is kind of crazy to say. Yeah. Which is kind that's of crazy. Insane. Only three of the eight have a winning record right now. Yeah. So that's an interesting point to look at. I, I, and I think that kind of segues us into the, the obviously the first game of uh, or sorry, excuse me, the second game of the of the second day, Sunday, Saturday. Um the water dogs losing to the cannons. I know you hit it on it a little bit earlier, Hoagie, but you know, the the three oh run, like they had had them by three, and then it just I don't know, it kind of shows like different things are not falling into place for the water dogs. And, you know, Cannons definitely deserved to have a win. I think that all kind of probably scared us when the Cannons, and I talked about it live, when the Cannons lost that first game, then their second game, you just you just knew they were going to have to pull out a win. Um, but did you guys think the Water Dogs could kind of seal it away? Then obviously we, we saw the game ended. Yeah. No, I, mean, I personally I, didn't think so. Because you you look at, I think the game was, what, 7-2, right? In the first half, right. yeah. Yeah, I was like, this is, this is terrible. But then... The way that the cannons played team uh, offense, it's elite. In the, it, after seven two was the best team offense I think that we've seen in this league. They every I think every single goal was assisted. Yeah, they, they, they were firing. They were moving the ball inside. Guys were Marcus Holman on off on uh, man up came in that one. What was that? The seven seven goal that yep. was beautiful. I, I I think the cannons look good. I really do. And I, the Water Dogs after that, they, they tied it up 7 7. It was over. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, watching that, the Water Dogs had that the whole game. Big lead, first half. Cannons kind of etched their way back a little bit. And then the Dogs went on that 3 0 run to take a 10 7 lead. And then after that, they lost, was it 14 10? So they got out towards 7 yeah. 0 the rest of the way. Like, that can't happen in the fourth oh, quarter at I'll, all. I'll kind of pose this question to to Hoagie and Dukes because it seems like you guys are kind of on this spectrum and, and Miles and I are kind of – the Water Dogs aren't as good as we think. Yeah. But for you guys, Hoagie and Dukes, we, we kind of had a lot of chatter about the Water Dogs because of the face-off they got to Catholics and they, they ended up winning that game. If you're a tyranny, what are you telling the guys? What's the switch you need to make? Obviously, we don't exactly know what Sour's injury is. But for you guys, if you're a coach, what, what are you telling the fellas? I'm telling Sowers not like you know All Star games this weekend. I'm gonna be like take that week off. Don't go to Louisville. Like rest, yeah. ice, do whatever you got to do to get back into shape. But look, I look at it from a goal differential thing. Like they still, and if you look at it from the standings from a goal differential standpoint, they're tied for fourth. Yeah. So again, like like Hoagie said, alluded to, yeah, you gotta get you gotta win some of these games. That was their worst game of the year. They got water dogs, and by water dogs, I mean they had a big lead, and then they let the other team come back and and win the game. That's usually what the, their mo is. So that was a little bit worrisome from that end, but end of the day, I I truly truly believe that they're a top six team that gets it, gets into the playoffs. They will be fine, and they'll they'll be right there with a chance to win it all. No, oh, I mean I agree. I don't think there's really a debate that they're a top six. I honestly think if I had a bet on bet on it, I'm saying that they're a top four team in the league. I don't think I'm doubting that at all. I think it's at some point though, like we got to look at the results on the field. We could say they're fourth yeah. in this, fifth in this, third in this. They're one. In, the reality is they're one and four. The reality is they haven't been able to close late games out. The reality is their one win is against the Chaos, and it honestly wasn't very convincing, to be honest. And the Chaos, to me, are an average team in this league, middle to bottom tier in the league, and it wasn't like they blew them out. I'm pretty sure that was like a low-scoring 10-6, 10-7 type game two weeks ago when they played. Like To me, the reality is sometimes you got to notice. I don't know what it is, but something's 
not not maybe clicking right with their team. And, and maybe yeah, it clicks yeah. in the second half. Maybe there's an intervention, like you said, Mitch. Maybe Bill says something and, you know, second half reset now. Maybe the All-Star breaks what they want. But, you know, to me, it's like there's too many. There's been too many second half lapses, too many, yeah. you know, Sowers, I'm concerned with his injury because he's, to me, been my MVP of, this, of the league this year. If I had a vote as of right now, I think Sowers, besides Teat, has been the MVP of the league in terms of like full importance to the team. Not taking away what Teat is because Teat is going to win MVP, the points record, all that stuff. But yep. Jeff Teat, I think you take Sowers off the Water Dogs infinitely. It's a massive switch taking Teat off the. You yeah. look at that lineup Teat's got. I mean, it's hard to definitely compare that for sure. So I'm not, you know, obviously not discrediting what Teat does, but to me, Sowers like runs that show in Philly. He's such a good place, so dynamic. But yeah. I don't know. That concerns me because then now McCardle's going to have to move down to that quarterback role. I think we need more to Jack Hanna. I think he needs to be held accountable a bit there. And I think, you know, Dylan Ward's play style, he jumps out of the cage a lot. I know that's what he does, but I feel like he gives up a lot of goals by coming out a little farther than usual. I know Definitely. that's been his bread and butter, but I don't know. We have to see. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what what they do, what what changes they make. I think they're fine, but you look at their schedule. Honestly, I don't think besides the Redwoods and the Outlaws, like they played Whip Snakes and Atlas twice. I have a hard time thinking they're going three and zero there. I think at least two and one, maybe one and two. And as you've seen this league, the Redwoods beat the Cannons last week. You can lose to the Redwoods. Any like Duke is saying, anyone can beat anyone. Yeah. If this I mean, continues, the Redwoods. Countless what if the Redwoods beat the, the Water Dogs? I'm you going. I'm going four and one to end the year. Four and one. Oh, yeah. With what? I, I, think, I think Dylan. You think they split Atlas, Dukes? I that would. That's what I would think. But you know, yeah. it could shake out anyway. But I, I, Dylan Ward, when he second half of the year, he always finishes the year strong. I'm counting on him to have like a, a fantastic end to the year. The Sowers injury is the biggest question mark. I do agree with you 100. percent Like this take m- might change him on depending on uh, his health status. But I'm betting on Wardo to to play some fantastic ball. Um, I think the schedule shakes out in the Water Dogs' favor. And again, like going out back to a team like the Atlas, the Atlas have a challenging schedule to end the year. They had a cupcake a little bit at the beginning of the year. And if I, I told you right now, hey, if and and it didn't, so it's a it's a what if situation. But if the Water Dogs beat beat the Whipstakes in overtime, what's the narrative that we're saying now? Well, how could they end the year? You know, they have two wins. They're two and three. I mean, we're t- saying like the whip stakes are really good, but if it's just a one goal difference between how we talk about a team. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. And I mean, you look at, you know, the record, it, it's what it all comes down to. It's something we talk about almost every show. It's just the talent, but kind of going into the, to, to the next game, you know, archers over whip snakes. Those are two teams that definitely have, again, what it takes, but haven't figured it all out. Obviously, you know, it's kind of two teams that came out of the year slow. Um, but I, I truly feel like two question marks of a team. Like you don't really know what archers and what whip snakes are getting week in, week out. Um, but obviously, you know, the archers over the whip snakes, 16, 11. Were we surprised about that? No, because I picked it. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, I, I got to I kind of feel for Krebs, man. You know, he he was he, he couldn't see the two ball. And we saw that kind of with Timmy Troutner. And uh, these goalies, I think it gets them a little bit more nervous yeah. when the ball's coming from two because they know it's like that much more important. Oh, got it. it definitely. But I think yeah. a question I pose for you guys is we were obviously all on site week one. You know, Bernlor got got pitched easy or, or pitched out of the game quick, right? You know, yeah. I think they scored yeah. like five quick, five or six quick. We haven't mm-hmm. seen them since. Does Stags make that change here soon or, or what do you guys think? No, I don't yep. think he makes that change. I think he's got crabs the rest of the way. Is I, that a, I think was that a Manhattan Jasper call? Yeah, or that's like, a Jasper take. Yeah. Take that's not a Jasper, Jasper hat. take at all. That's not a Jasper <laughs> take at all. I just think, I think the, the 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 quick to pull a goalie after one game thing to me is is just crazy. I think yeah. there was one thing to do it with Liam Entman because he's a generational player and he was a top five pick, but like generational. You know, Burnlore like Burn is. Out of his prime, he's coming down on on the slope of the career a little bit. Definitely. Got shelled week one. I don't think throwing him in the lineup is really going to change it. To me, what the Whip Snakes are is they're a gritty team with Rambo, Heacock. They fight hard. They Nards when he's on at the faceoff X can give them extra possessions. And yeah. if a couple of those shots fall, they play hard. They can win a game. Are they a legit contender to me? No, but yeah. you know that's what to me they are. I don't think the goalie situation is. Is gonna. Ele- I don't think adding Kyle Burnlore is like wow. The whips are legit. Yeah, it's not gonna change. Too I much. think that, that is too much. 
Oh, you think I, I do? Wow. Yeah, I, I, I think I Krebs is really good. I'm not saying that they should make the change, but if you're asking me, Brendan Krebs is playing at his best level. Kyle Burnlor is playing at his best level. I would rather have Kyle Burnlor. Yeah, no, and look, and that's an argument that you that you can have. I'm I'm posing the question more of like yeah, whether it was Krebs or Burnlor. I just don't really know. know. I don't think it, I don't think adding Burnlor really elevates them that much. To be honest with you, I don't think it really changes who they are as a team. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that in, in a yeah. sense. Do I think that they, they could have lost by less goals to the Archers? Yeah. Like, could that have been a 13-11 game, 12-11 game, potentially? But, that, that I mean, I just think that you you are a better team with Kyle Burnlor and Cage playing at his elite level. And I truly do think that, like, a player like him who's coaching high school lacrosse doesn't see the shots in the spring. Now he's yeah. seeing shots by professionals every single week, um, yeah. probably seeing the field more, getting shots more, seeing the ball. I think now he's probably a better goalie than he was going into week one, just getting shelled. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's it's tough for a guy like that. I don't don't know exactly what he was doing before, um, you know, coaching high school lacrosse, but it's tough. And a question I'll pose to you guys, another live Mitch's mailbox from Boston, kind of going off both teams. Uh, one kid came up, and I'm blanking on his name, but he asked, two-part question. Number one, he thought Mac O'Keefe is a top 10 player in the league, and two, he said, Matt Rambo is overrated. What do we think about that? Yeah, Obviously, I like the Mac O'Keefe take. I don't that think Mac O'Keefe's a top 10 player in the world, no. He, but he's like right on the edge there. It's like it could be like a 11, 12, maybe not top 10. Is he and- really a top 10 player? Like To me, he's like third wheel on his own team behind guys like Grant Amen and guys like um, – I mean, I don't like know. Fiber, I mean, I mean week in, week out, he's playing elite. And Connor Fields, like, just because, like, I, I don't think Mac O'Keefe's a top. He's a great player. I don't think he's a top two player in the world. I think he's like the fourth best player on his own team. Yeah. So, I what mean, his points look like this. I think. Well, you would have. I think he's right player, there. You're talking about top ten guys, and all positions in the top ten. So we kind of built, uh, laid it out where I was like. He's an 11 through 20 guy. I think he's 11 through 20 guy. Um, yes. On that team, I know, Hoagie, to your point, like, Travers definitely the best. But, like, you can really, you know, Fields, Met, O'Keefe. You oh, can kind I, of- I think you can mix and match those three. I agree, Mitch. You can mix and match those three in terms, of like, who has more points on a given week or in a couple weeks stretch. Yeah. I still think, as of right now, Connor Fields is a, be- a better player than Mac O'Keefe is overall, even if Mac O'Keefe's hotter right now. I think you can make the argument with Amen, though. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I, I, I disagree with that. I, I think I'd rather have Mac than Connor Fields. I think Connor Fields can do more with the ball on his stick. I agree with that. But if you're giving me, like, the option as a as a GM, and I'm like, okay, we have um we have a Mikey Sowers. We have an X player. Like, who do you want to pair him up with? And I had one choice in the league. I'm probably going to take Mac O'Keefe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's definitely. great. I mean, yeah, yeah you, he's, you, he's, you he's, agree with he's, that. he's a great, he's a great Robin. Robin to Batman. He's a yeah, great, right. but I think it. that's that puts you right on the conversation of like, I think 11 to do 20 is like a fine, fine thing to say, Mitch, but I, I would put yeah. him more in that like eight to 13 range. Yeah, I mean, to okay. me, it's more, it's like when you're kind of one of those like Robin type players, like you feed off being well, like, oh, I have Michael Sowers, I'm gonna fit, you know, uh, Mac O'Keefe in right there, and he's gonna like light it up. Like, yeah. he almost to me, like. To me, when I think top 10 players in the world, I think like initiator, quarterback, give him the ball, he's going to make the play, he's going to do anything. Like to me, Mac O'Keefe is an amazing player and he's going to put up great points, so score, he'll assist. But he needs like that Michael Sowers, that Connor Schellenberger to get him going. He's not going to be a partner starter himself. And to me, to be a top 10 player in the world is what we're talking about here. You got to be a party starter, you got to be a quarterback, you got to be versatile. Rebuttal, yeah. rebuttal is do you, so you'd call, you'd call Mac O'Keefe like a specialist then? Yeah. I would. Yeah, so would you, is Trevor a top 10 player in the world? Trevor Baptiste? Not right now. No, he's, I don't no. even think he's top three in face offs right now. Who's your Not top three? Nards has outperformed him. Uh, Weirman outperformed him last week. Uh, TD outperformed him. This three straight weeks, T, uh, Trevor's been under 50% at the strike. You still, but you still, just because of a skid, you're still not going to put Trevor as a top 10 player in the league. MVP I don't like I two think, years ago. I mean, he's a face off guy, and I'm a face off guy myself. I don't okay, know if a face off guy I don't think a face off guy deserves to be in the top ten players in the world. They can have value. Okay. You don't think one of the Fogos deserves to be in the top ten? <laughs> I'm with Mitch. Dude, I mean, if you, if you believe Trevor's not top three right now, like that's I agree with that, but there's gotta be at least one of those cats in the top ten. 
All right, so let's just say right now, I think TD Erland's the best face-off guy, face guy in the world as of right now. Okay, you if that's your number one pick, where are you putting him? Let's just say hypothetically. You think TD is the a top 10 player in the entire world in terms of little cross player? I do think – I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I do think I so. No, no. If you think I, – I truly think there's going to be one Fogo in the top. I just think face-offs is not as important in the PLL, and if we were having this conversation about college, then yeah, let's put TD Erland in. It's the fact that we're talking about the PLL but right that's now. That's like and, talking about the top 10 players in the NFL and putting Justin Tucker in there because yeah. he's a kicker and makes every field goal. Yeah, it doesn't really oh, make that's sense. That's so different. Right I, it's so different, I think. I'm, I get what you're saying, but like, I feel like when you're talking about like top 10 player, like at players, not like the best team in the world, like not like we're putting the best team together. Like you're just saying overall player. They could be 10 attackmen if you think the t- attackmen are the 10 best in the world. I don't think it's fair to put like TD Irland as a top 10 player in the entire world in lacrosse. I mean, yeah, do we no, know what no Matisse was ranked last year? Yeah, I got it. It was four. Top five were Tom, then Mike at two, Blaze, Trevor at four, Holman at five. Yeah, I mean, I mean argument- a dominant Trevor Baptiste is, is a top pl- 10 player in the world. I agree, but he's not, I, that's he's the not one dominant right in. now. Yeah. He's, his he's percentage right now, Hoagie. Do not I don't know. It's under fifty percent. It's under fifty percent. Wow. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I mean. Let's think about this. He was I don't, think he's, under, I, don't, I, don't think I don't think he's under technically total, but like because he's got some wins. I think. Yes, against I see. Other like guys, but play the, water the top dog. last three weeks, he played uh, TD Earl and Joan Ardella and Luke Weirman. It was under fifty percent all three games. So, yeah, so you can't. I put mean, him to in, me, yeah. it's like if Trevor is dominating like he was last year, scoring all these goals because Trevor's been such a threat to uh, even this year. He's scoring a lot of goals. Then I'm like, all right, that's fair to be a top ten player in the world. I just don't really like right now to be the best face off guy is TD Erland in, in, so far, and yeah. I don't think he's a. T- I don't think you can say he's a top ten player in the world. Because we look at the Redwoods and they're just like, I'm they're still good. going to like I'm going to look at what he's done over the past three years to guard like like say like who like a top ten player in the world is like if you're going to say like best face off guy right now that's a totally different argument, but I still think it's right to call Trevor for the body of work that he's put in the past five years. Te- like what? Are you, I don't even know how long he's been in the league now at this point. Yeah, but you can't put off the you can't put off the five years he's put in about when we're talking about this year's top ten. Fair, no, but no, I'm not saying like no, who, who I, I be top ten next year. I agree with Dukes because like if you're talking like overall body of work, he's a top ten player in our league in terms of guy personality, right. what he's done. Well, yeah, yeah, but we're not talking about that. No, but I, if we're talking about like saying- top ten in the world. Skills, but why skills? Skill wise. We're not talking yeah, I'm pro- still gonna. I'm still. I'm still gonna feel very comfortable going to sleep at night calling him a top ten player in the world. Trevor Baptiste, you're calling a top ten player. Yeah, in, the world? in current form, no. But I'm still gonna give him that right to call him a top ten player in the world. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. But I yeah. just think, as of right now, if he's, I'd say he's probably third in the league. I think even just because he went under fifty percent doesn't matter. Like I think he's still. You still put him ahead of Luke Weirman, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But like out of a respect factor, Trevor uh, or no, Joe Nardella. And TD have been in this league for a while, doing it well. They were better than Trevor in the both games. You have to put those two at least ahead. I think it would be disrespectful to put oh, Weirman. I don't agree with that, Hoagie. And you face off guy, like I, you, you really think because a better face off guy gets outdone one game that like doesn't earn him the right, like he's still not better than them, even if he beat them the past four times they played. And I don't know the numbers. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question. Oh well, yeah, I, I just think like what, TD, TD. Like I said, Nard's going 31 for 31 against the Water Dogs, even with no faceoff guy. Nard's – people forget about what Nard's was too. Nard's before the injury was one He's of the best. he has been one of the best. Like, yeah. I agree. I think overall, overall, Trevor is the best faceoff guy in the world, and he's been the best faceoff guy in the world for the last couple of years. I don't think as of right now, this season, I don't think he's been the best faceoff guy in the world. Chat, clip that. <laughs> Tag Trevor, clip that. <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good segue. That's a good segue. I like that. That wraps up, obviously, games up in Boston. Um, let's talk about fantasy real quick, Hoagie. Let's take the point there. Yeah, so fantasy of the week. This is this is the lineup we got rolling. Um, so we got, you know, TJ Malone, big performance, 46 points. for. He looks, good. He looks, he he looks, looks really good. Shelly Shelley was supposed to get 46, but a solid 24. I'll take it. Uh, the Matt Campbell one, one point really hurt. That was uh, – <laughs> That one was not, not, not a style. Luke Weirman, 32. Let me guess one. It happens. It happens. Oh, it happens. We had, we had Jerry Connors let us down a uh, couple weeks back, and then now we got that now too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Colin Kirst, even though we only had 20 points, if you watch that game, he was phenomenal down the stretch for them. 
And Luke Weirman picking him up with only 18 coins uh, overperforming there too was good. And I don't know, Tevlin in there, added him in there, Swiss Army Knife. So yeah. 151, not, not, definitely better than last week. Last week was a total disaster. Last week was heinous. Last, last, last week was heinous. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the Alex work with the Connor Schellenberger. I mean, obviously, oh, Teet's been yeah. lighting it up down there, you know, with Xander and Connor. Do, who do you think is the third guy on that on that list? Is it is it Shelly? You think, or do you think it's Xander? If we had to if we had to rank that that attack line, third guy, I think it's one Jeff Teet, obviously yeah, two yeah, Shelly, yeah. three Xander. We yes, so. because I I agree because. I don't dude, think that. I see that face, Dukes. No, no, no. I, I agree. I agree with Hoagie. He just hates all fall players, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't hate all fall players, but it's like. It's just the fact that he's not as good without the two guys. I get it. I, I was just giggling you're, to myself. You're an all fall attackman. Like, that's, what, that's the one thing that, like, triggers me. I see these guys. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. So good. He had four goals. He had four dipping dunks on the sideline. Anyone could stand like your job as an attackman is to put the ball in the back of the net. That's what you're supposed to do. If you're getting just fourth fed shooting from five yards, congrats. Congrats. Hey, it's harder said you than done. Open, right? Sometimes you're not even open. Much. Sometimes you're just here you go, here you go. Skip pass, goal, one goal. I I don't have a thing <laughs> wrong with off ball attackman. It's just like it's I don't man. know. I mean, Shelly <laughs> You watch it. You take off ball guys off teams. Obviously, it's a big gap, but you you need the quarterback to initiate it, or these off ball guys are not the same player. That's a fact. That's fair, but do you, do the do the quarterbacks also need the off ball guys to get the assists and the points? No, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's a Batman Robin situation. Um, but I just wanted to ask because it, I feel like you've you've kind of felt this year it's been a little bit more of you know where we saw in the past the Shelly Desander combo. So now this year has been more the teat to Xander combo. And that's why I want to ask to kind of hear your guys' top three. Uh, but that obviously wraps up fantasy. We don't have any pickups this week because we're going into All-Star Weekend. From the heavens above, please come out and let us know the All-Star roster. We're filming this on a Monday, a day before the All-Star roster comes out. We don't we don't even know who's on the two teams, East and West. Um, so we're about to hear them live. You're going to see our live reaction. So let's get into it. Yep. Here we go, guys. So this is what this is what you come to TLN for. You got the inside scoop here. So the I, I will preface this by saying that I'm going to leave off um, some people who I've been told are, are up in the air due to like injuries and, and whatnot okay. that might have happened in the previous week. But um, okay. to my knowledge, this is the, the group that will be attending in Louisville. So I'm going to start with the East. The captain is... Jeff T starter at attack. Oh, okay. There is um, another attackman, Asher Nolting, in the east. The other attackman is Marcus Holman. We have Garrett Apple on defense. We have Matthew Dunn on defense from the Whips. We have Gavin Adler on defense. The two LSMs are Tyler Carpenter from the Atlas and Ben Randall from the Water Dogs. The face-off man is Trevor Baptiste, and the other one is Joe Nardella. It has Trevor Baptiste listed as the starter. The goalie is Tim Troutner. The other goalie is Colin Kirst from the Cannons. Midfielders are Dox Aitken, Miles Jones, Matt Campbell, and Ryan Drenner. Two D middies are Danny Logan and Matt Witcher. The head coach for the East is Bill Tierney. What, what do you think about the Bill Tierney? Where did that come from? Is that just from? Yeah, the I don't know where there? the head coach. Yeah, that is insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how do they determine who's a legend. Coach. We know he did it in college, but you look yeah. at the statistics in, in PLL. To get the All Star coach, I mean, I'm a nice Italian guy, but you know, like, you know what I think might have happened, Mitch. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying this in a joking matter. I think the way I would have done it is first place teams coach is coaching. Pressler might have been like, look, I want a vacation. And they go down the line. Tyranny was the last in the East. They go, all right, sorry, you're doing it. <laughs> Get to Louisville, start drinking some Rebel like, bourbon. All the other three coaches are like, we deserve a break. And they're like, Bill, you're last place. You got to go. That that, that might have been it. I mean, besides the coach, for that's what the East set in stone. What do we think about that? I mean, Let's Trout or Starter. How about that? Timmy, Timmy Trout. <laughs> okay, this, could, this is another interesting concept. 
Troutner could play in the All Star game and then potentially not play the rest of this year. How kind of crazy is that? That's insane. I will say insane. we're we're setting up for you know All Star games are usually a little loose. You know, yeah. guys taking a lot of two balls, messing around. Tim Troutner might be the only guy in that field who's genuinely locked in like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying yeah. to make saves, trying to make plays. Like seriously, like I don't think he's going to be farting around like yeah. some of the yeah. other guys maybe. Let's not forget Timmy Troutner has a goal in the All Star game previously. He does. As well. Oh, so he's good. Interesting. Yeah. And, and uh, producer from the heavens, um, can you equip the staff on? Is there any sort of incentives here if the East or West wins from a money standpoint for the players? That is an actually great question that I think I should know, but I just got to be some cash app money involved. I feel yeah, like yeah. I think be be. Um, can I can I tell you confidently? No, sir, I can't. But okay, okay, awesome. That that was something I was interested in because it's like I don't even know who would win. Obviously, we haven't heard West yet, but from the East, final thoughts. Love the attack. Love the midfield. They're going to be scoring a lot of goals. Yeah, yeah. I have nothing off the top of my head that I'm angry about right now. Um, yeah. I think Miles kind of earned it. And I also but, think, yeah. like, Tim deserves to be an all-star. I think we're just saying, questioning it because he's – Yeah. I mean, obviously, Entenman's starting the rest of the way. If you're just looking at the first five games, you know, that's a, fa- that's a fact. He deserved to be on there. Ooh, we just thought of it. Xander Dixon. Snubbed? Question mark? No. I mean, he's, it's a Ooh. starter. Who, who yeah, are you going to take mean, off? You, who are you going to take off that list? You know what I mean? Match? Yeah. Yeah, I guess – I mean, we kind of talked about it, right? All four of those guys, maybe there's a little bit argument there for Asher, but all of those guys essentially are those party starters like we talked about. And I think it's hard to put, again, a guy like Xander. You don't think so, Dukes? Even like – because I look at it from – what about Sowers and McCardle, who have also only played five games? I think a lot of the Atlas players all deserve to be on it. And even My- like Miles Jones, I think, full- fully deserves to get a nod as a starter. So I'm not taking anything away from that. I think when you're looking at the stats, I think a lot of people are looking at, oh, look, he, they have more points than this player, but they've also played the most games. And the Atlas are the best team in the league. But I'm just speaking purely from a voting all-star perspective. Um, I, I think McCardle probably should have. I yeah. agree. I, I agree. Tough. McCardle's it's so tough. underrated. It's actually – I mean, we, we look about it, Hoagie, when we were playing. To get first team, second team, third team, honorable mention All-American – there was a big dip off in that, again, from the first team, second team guys being those party starters. And the guys that are off ball guys, obviously, they're still putting the points up, but you know, the skill in some areas like don't line up and, and we obviously see the dip off there. So I don't know. I think it's a it's a kind of a battle for 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 each player, but and also fun fact, Coach Dylan Sheridan coached us at Ohio State is the assistant and coach of the East Team. Of Hoagie, the theory could be right. I kind of like the theory. I mean, you're telling me all those guys, Tyranny, Stags, Stags doesn't want to go to the Jersey Shore this weekend? I mean, come yeah. on. And you're telling me right off the bat, like I think we'd all kind of agree here with how the Atlas were last year to this year. Pressler should be obviously the head coach. But again, Hoagie, you could be right. You could be right. All right, let's I go know, to the West. You have to say, if, if Nat St. Lorenz, the West coach, then we know that's the theory is true. Yeah. He was his boy. <laughs> I love that. He's my boy. I love that guy. All right, we'll jump into the the West. And again, these are um, who we believe will be there. We're not allowed to give out the injury report, but this is who we have so far. So in the West, starting on attack, we have Ryder Garnsey from the Redwoods. We have Connor Fields from the Archers. We have Ron Pinnell from the Redwoods. We have Mac O'Keefe, also from the Archers. The defenders are Jack Rowlett, Jared Newman, and JT Giles Harris. The starting LSM is Duke's boy, Jake Pacino. The second LSM <laughs> is Jared Connors. Two face-off men uh, are TD Erlen and Mike Sisselberger. One of the goalies is Brett Dobson. Midfield, we have Tom Schreiber. He is also a captain for the West. Uh, rounding up the other midfield is Grant Amit. We have Brendan O'Neill. Uh, the two... Defensive midfielders are Zach Geddes and Piper Gond, and the coach is Chris Bates. Yeah, I don't know about this one, dude. I'm... I think one that catches my eyes off the bat is honestly O'Neal. Yeah, Brennan O'Neill is crazy. If he that's, that's crazy that he's that insane. Like 
I don't want to take anything away from him, but besides that take one it. game, I mean, he, he's been a he's been an invisible. I said that. Besides that one game, he's been a he's been an invisible ghost. He had eight touches last week. Has one goal. Uh, and he's one goal as a midfielder. What? He's also on here as a midfielder for the West. I just don't see how he's an all star personally. Even like Jake Pacino, I think that's insane. Also that he's a, that he's an all star. Yeah, mean, like I. I'm only and also my Jake Pacino is, like, is, is now, is now for Miles. It's now for Miles. Like he doesn't follow Miles back, but yeah, he hasn't even yeah. been. He hasn't even been bad. He hasn't been bad. It's just in what world is he a starter right now? I think it's like major disrespect to the other LSMs in the league. You can even probably pay, make the argument that he hasn't even been the best LSM on his team. I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, also, if we look at these teams from a holistic perspective, okay, hold on, hold on. Rob Pinnell, seriously, he didn't have a yeah, point. Yeah, that was crazy. That That's was crazy. crazy, dude. That's like he See, must be I, I think he's been playing for so long. I still think he's. He, an he must be. He must be retiring or something. So they're just bringing him up there. Yeah, it's like his last time and his last like, ride. Um, like, we'll well, give you how is, yeah, I know Hoagie will get fired up. How is Trey Leclerc not an all star? Yeah, that's oh, crazy. He so he's had a great year, dude. That's insane. I don't know. But I feel see, like- we're kind of coming down to is it, you know, is this? I don't a, know how this is done because that's gonna that's a question I have. It's like, you know, and we have it in all our sports, so it's not just this, but like sometimes it's just a popularity contest, and it's not yeah. the best players who actually they get. No, they know Brenner and he will sell tickets, sell jerseys, and again, we don't know if is it all skill, is it fan based, is it behind the scenes? People at PLO make the call. Who really picks the All Star game? But this West team, I mean, if you look at it holistically too. What's the final score if these two teams play a full out game? I think the East is crushing them. What? Oh, it's fan How vote. How the hell? What the hell? See, I, don't, I don't like the fan vote because oh, it's fan voted. We just got that in on. I don't makes like so much sense. That makes I don't sense. like yeah, the yeah, fan. Yeah. I don't like the fan vote because you know then you got like the Jake Pacino clout. They just vote away. They go for names. You know, I'll give another example of another LSM who's been great. Colin Squires has been great for the Whip yeah, Snakes. Great. No one knows who he is. So everyone who's voting, they don't click on his name. He's been he unbelievable. He has two thousand followers on Instagram. It's like they don't yeah. know like, who he is. Yeah. yeah, that's. I don't know if I like that. I get it. You got to have the names there, and you want to have guys like RP3 and O'Neill there. But like, if we're gonna call this, I think we need to have the best, the best players who deserve to be there as an All Star. Wow, fun who's fact. The second LSM of the ten point leaders in the PLL right now are on the Eastern Conference. What did you Nine say? Nine out of the ten. What? Nine out of the ten point leaders in the PLL right now are in the Eastern Conference. East minus six and a half on on lock. Who was the second? LSM? Who was the second LSM on the West? The West? Yeah. Uh, Jared Connors. Jared Connors. Okay. What are we doing? Yeah, Jared Connors has. Yeah. I, I mean, it, yeah. The fact Troy put some respect on Troy Ray's name right there now. Like that's another one. It's just like oh well. He'll be like a substitute if somebody can't come. It's like he should be a starter. I mean, like if we Mason got, Woodward. I got a lot, I think Mason I got a lot of problems. We just West. named off guys that aren't popular in the lacrosse world, but are better players on the West side, and yeah, they're not, not in conversation. Yeah, Mitch, yeah. you got to take someone to like Mitchell Pelkey lacrosse camp, but you play no lacrosse. It's just like how to get your social cloud up. <laughs> just so they can be a starter. <laughs> even even face off, I was like, Luke Weirman's been really good. He has the way. Good. Yeah. I'm actually kind of shocked he's not on there. I like, mean, if you look at rookies, is it just is it just Shelly and O'Neal? Can I go off really quick? Guys? Yeah, yeah, go no, off. Jake Pacino. Jake Pacino. Pacino, yeah. No, no disrespect. This is I want this to be clear right now. Brennan O'Neill, one thousand percent good at lacrosse. I saw can your tweet. Stop? I love it. Dude. Can we stop but with the at, at at his best, he's one of the best lacrosse players in the world. He has never once been the best lacrosse player in the world. Ever. Not once. And people are going to be like, what about when he won to Team USA MVP? He was playing against inferior opponents when he was getting a short stick at the midfield. He played great in the gold medal game. But not for one second has he ever been the best lacrosse player in the world. That's crazy. Tom Schreiber still plays. And I think it's crazy, too. Like, if he didn't have that ridiculous, like, five minutes of or one quarter of action against Denver... <laughs> We would be sitting here being like, what the hell is going on with Brennan O'Neill? Like, is he a yeah, boss? Yeah. Like, it seriously. Acts, okay. It literally goes back to uh, what, the first episode, the fourth – or the fourth episode, the first obviously after the championship game. We don't know what Brennan O'Neill we're getting each week. And that's yeah, – that If we're, getting, if we're getting top tier Brennan O'Neill for 10 minutes and we're not getting him for three and a half of the – three full games and a whole half of that game 
Like, what what is that? Like, eight touches this past weekend, one goal week one, one goal week uh, against the Redwoods two weeks ago. I mean, like I said, if he doesn't have that seven goal complete blow up, I mean, we're going to be sitting here like. Yeah, but honestly, that? like, if he didn't have that game, Hoagie, I still think you'd be in the conversation because, it, again, it's fan vote. Oh, I 100% oh, agree. He, he definitely would have still been. He might have been in it sitting on the sideline playing midfield right now. He would have been in the all-star game. All right, so so if we're if we're if we're we got Paul and Mike on the call right now, what are we telling them to switch up the All Star game, the voting for next year? How do you think it should be? Should it be behind the scenes? Should it be players? Should it be fans? Should it be mixed? What do you guys think? I personally, I love the players. I think the players should vote for who they think should be an All Star. I think you should have like it should be like voting in America. Like you should be eighteen plus. But it's tough because no, but (laughs) yeah, but it's tough though because Mitch. It's tough, too, because it's like, how do you want to view the All-Star game? Like, look, we're going to Louisville, Kentucky. We're trying to grow the game as much as we yeah. can. To be honest, yeah. the bottom line is the game really doesn't matter. Like, yeah, the All-Star yeah. game. So it's what? like, yeah. it, the game doesn't matter. No one cares who wins or loses who plays. So oh, do we care more about – State spring football game. Oh, do we care <laughs> about – Do we yeah, care more to have a couple of adult beverages? In terms of growing the game, or are we trying to get, you know, the guys who deserve it the most? You know, a guy who's saying, you know what, look, I, I'm an All-Star. I've played well. Or is it, let's get the best guys in the world here and the names here. So when the people who come to Louisville are coming, they want to see the legend of the sport. So that that's it depends what avenue we want to go down. I think that's smart for going the game because you want to see legends. There'll be little kids who grow up and say, I saw Rob Pinnell play, you know, at the end of his career. Kind of That's cool. But at the same time, it sucks for guys who've put in so much work and had an amazing year and they can't now put that on their resume and in 10, 15 years now, say I was a PLO All-Star, I was all this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's tough. It's a tough call to make, but that's that's, well, a, that's let's go down the line and give our – let's go down the line and give each of our biggest snubs, we think, out of the All-Star game. Give me one name. Which way is this line going? I can't tell by this setup. Yeah, I can't tell either. I already said it. I already said it. I think Colin Squires is – was McCardle on it or no? No. Kieran McCardle, biggest snub for me. Stole mine. Kieran McCardle all day. Kieran McCardle, I got three. Kieran McCardle, Colin Squires, snub for the whips, and Luke Weirman. Luke Weirman, yeah. Phenomenal on the West. Luke Weirman could be mine for the West. I think – I don't think it's Weirman just because of – I feel like he's peaking a little late for the picks. And, again, like he's not a popular guy. Yeah. But that was going to be my pick too. I, I think he's he's a S and P five hundred stock right now for the rest of the year. Just keep going up, baby. All right, well that's going to keep us going here. All star picks, interesting. Uh, but as of hey, now, wait, before we start though, I kind of now that I know it's fan voting, the fact that we didn't send Steven Zoop to the All Star game is on yeah, us. I, like I didn't even vote. Truthfully, yes, we could have been clicking that thing all day long. <laughs> God, I mean. <laughs> Now that. we know. Now we know. <laughs> Tyranny on the sideline. I love it. Uh, well, rankings right now. Pelk had a terrible week. I'm sitting at nine and eleven. We got Hoagie at seven and thirteen. Are we getting nervous, V? I'm not getting nervous here because you know I, you, you got to give the credit to Miles. He's been picking well. Let's not forget so. Miles. What's your secret, dog? It's luck. No, no, no. no. You know what Miles what is it? What's Let's a bit? Forget. Let's not forget if you run back the last episode. Oh, Mitch, we got it all here. We were. All in a grants on a couple picks, and we purposely told Miles to take like the cannons and stuff, just so that he would lose with us or whatever. Yeah. And then he ended up benefiting from it. Remember, we were yeah. like, do it for no, now. No. It's just like if we're in the studio, I'm going last, and I'm just picking the opposite picks. Yeah, yeah. Of, no, it's such a good Miles is like, I'm going water dogs, and we're like, nope, you're taking cannons. Just trying to get him another L, thinking the dog's gonna win, and then he yeah. gets a W out of it. So you I know, know what? but like, like looking back, it's like it's such a good take because we talk about all the time how good this league is. Any given week, any team can win. So like, I think it is a good way to to win games by going last. It's uh, I mean, I mean, that's what I did. I when I saw it, and uh, you guys were like, "Who are you picking?" And I was like, "All right, one one of these teams like." Some like one one of these upsets is going to happen, and I was yeah. like, you know what? Like, I think that the Water Dogs are going to win this game. The Cannons aren't going to go zero and two, so I'll, I'll pick them against the Woods. And then it's like the Outlaws got murked. Yeah, I know. It's, Not even it's crazy. When we talk about it again, the talent in this league is so hard to pick. Dukes or sorry, Miles, you're, you're first place. Then myself at second, and last place tied. Hoagie and Dukes sitting at seven and thirteen. 
Or have Did my record get ch- fixed? Yeah, yes. we, we yeah, got yeah, you on. Fixed. We've had that fixed. I've, I've had, had you fixed whoa, a few times. Look up in here. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, dude, Miles coming at you there. This is Miles, crazy. Uh, yeah. uh, dude, <laughs> the never, top. dude, that, dude cause I had that. It it's was wrong on the graphic that one week, but I had it right on the dock, so don't worry. It's go time. I'm not like nervous it. one bit. I love this. No, that's good. Uh, we're kind of hopping into SCX. We talked about it a little bit last week, um, but we SCX added a new high school athlete, Owen Cran, going to Penn, midfielder. Um, you know, if you guys – if NIL, if NIL was a thing back when we were in high school, how cool would it have been to get signed by an STX? You know, how, how sick would that have been? I mean – and I NIL um, started for me in 2021, same with Hoagie. But for back in the day, if you guys were able to get signed by an STX, how sick would that have been? Just be like flexing in high school that like you're sponsored by the best lacrosse company in the world. It'd be yeah. so cool, but it really wasn't in my cards just based off the fact that I wasn't going to like a high division one school. But like it brings the conversation of like if I am going to play high level division one lacrosse, and I'm like a junior in high school, do I start building my social platform yes. so that one of these schools can reach out? And, you know, me and Mitch have been doing this stuff since high school. Yep. And it shocks me that more guys aren't doing this to just like build a name for themselves. We're, we look at the all-star game. These guys are named guys. I mean, a lot of them because of how good they are at lacrosse, but guys that build their name in the sport will get voted for in the all-star game. They'll get paid by companies and yeah. I think that if you're a kid watching this out there right now, I'm talking to you, go post more on Instagram, go make an Instagram reel, and maybe a, a, a company like STX will reach out to you. What do you think is the biggest thing on why kids don't build their social? Is it just getting you know, their chops busted? Are they afraid what people are going to say? Like, what do you guys think it is? It's not a question for me. I need, I need one of these guys to say I mean, it. to me personally, when I think about it, it's like, not every single guy is a social media guy. I think it takes specific people, kind of like you, Miles, like you, Mitch, who like are into it, invested in it, have personalities, enjoy doing it, have fun a lot. Some guys, you know, we all have guys like Mitch. Like I couldn't see Steven Zoop vlogging stuff. He's yeah. go yeah. to practice, put his stuff in the car. Like, I think the thing that gets underrated too, it's like it, it takes so much time. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Final product, but like to do that consistently, it's a lot. And do and, we have an idea like on – so like the high school guys, like – yeah. Are these guys getting paid money or is it like they're getting free gear? Do we have any idea? Honestly, how that I don't know. Um, I don't know what it looks like. Um, but one of the most interesting parts is all these guys are going to STX schools. Yeah. So that's kind so of that's STX, cool. by the way, has done before, far and beyond the best job um, in terms of getting with NIL athletes and really growing the brand. And yeah. I know, you know, Mitch, you've obviously had a long relationship with STX, a sponsor yeah. and stuff like that. So, you know, people might be like, oh, Mitch just says STX, blah, blah. Like, I truly play, – playing in Ohio State, using STX. STX is the best brand in, in lacrosse, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, no doubt, not biased, not just saying it. Like, in terms of shafts, gloves, like, the side tie shafts that they have are the best shafts I ever used in my career. Those STX surgeon gloves, Mitch. Yeah, they're legit. You use the same pair for four years, and they barely had a hole in those things. Like, Oh, trust me. I still got them in the garage, baby. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, SDX just yeah. they do a great job with you know marketing platform to these kids um and i think it's interesting and you know i don't know if there's more is that funneling kids too like you know do if i'm a college am i partnering with stx and my equipment sponsor because stx is getting on these kids early yeah in high and school. Also too like the kids love the stx products they want to go to an stx school or if i'm like a hopkins or if i'm a pen and i'm like the head coach there Am I like – I don't know if this is illegal or legal or not, but am I saying to the recruit like, hey, if you come here, you know, we kind of got, you know, an opportunity. You got an STX deal for you. Yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm saying, Mitch. I don't know if that's like, legal. Uh, I don't see that because all, these, all that. these athletes are going to STX college schools. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's definitely so, a conversation. I don't think they're using it. I think it's more like STX when they're identifying what athletes they want to partner with. They're going to they partner find, with yeah. kids who are going to SDX schools because yeah, they want me to be able to partner with them, obviously. But I do think moving forward, like if you recruit a kid and he's, you know, you you get on a kid early and sign him as an STX athlete, he loves the gear, he's getting paid. Like he might be like, honestly, I want to go to an STX school. And they're like, look, you go to, you're at, let's just make this up. Your NIL deal right now in high school is $1,000 and, you know, you get two free heads, two free shafts, gloves, whatever. They might be like, 
if you're a college guy and you go to STX, then you're going to get this contract if you go to an STX school. Yeah, they kind of can already kind of see your rookie contract your freshman year. That's a good point. That's a good point, actually. That's sick. Interesting. Interesting. I like that. It's an agent hoagie. Uh, Let's bring this whole thing to an end. Episode nine in the books. Dukes, hit us with a fun fact. What do you got for us? Finish this thing out on the right note. All right. Liam Entman won last weekend, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Liam Entman has not lost a game in regulation besides Virginia. He lost three games, I believe, to Virginia. The last time he lost a game in regulation to a team besides Virginia was March 12th, 2022 against the Ohio State University. Yeah, I still remember that game. That was the coldest game ever. Games ever. Oh my God. I remember I had three thermals on. I had the rubber gloves on. That was one of those things where it was like, you know, at Ohio State, like we would always get there on like what, an hour and a half early, Mitch. And then it was kind of like you could either go out and play wall ball, shoot, or you could just stay in the locker room and chill. And usually, like, I would be like, you know what? Like, why am I sitting around? Like, I'm just going to go out there, have a catch, you know, feel the vibes. I'm in the shoe. Let's go. Like, that game, yeah. I remember I stayed inside the whole time. Halftime horn, sprint off the field like dude that game was it was like for <laughs> no flutters I was going in on midfield trying to catch the ball cradle my stick i remember i dodged i got absolutely lit up i got hacked all over the place my i was like i'm getting out of here dog ran to the box <laughs> that was it for me. Like, well, you got the dub that's all that matters we got the w we got the w i kept him out of the tournament i don't yeah, it did it did it did NCAA um, tournament game in the shoes like three weather in march God, I love that. All right, episode nine in the books. We'll see you guys in episode 10. Peace.